three forward three from Nottingham. One six five five from North End. See what you got in here, or not. I don't know what's what. Thank you. Two white metal rings, black stones, a white metal bracelet, a pair of sunglasses, and a white metal buckle ring, plus a white metal St. Christopher. You agree? Yes, sir. Right. How many, sir? One. From Newport Magnum. One from Newport Magnum. Look, did you come on a coach? Yeah. I came on the meat wagon. Come on, two coaches. First of all, we went. <laughs> Your legs went on you, look. Hi, Mum. <laughs> Smith! Okay. What's your first name? Lee, sir. Lee? Yes, sir. L E W. -E. Yes, sir. Okay, have you had any serious illnesses? And what I mean by that is hepatitis, fits. Are you diabetic? Nice. Well, I'm looking to identify um, an inmate who could be a risk, either suicidal, um, health. And the way in which I do that, when he, he, he arrives here, I tend to watch um, the movement of the inmate, his speech, is it slurred? Um, is he acting over anxious? Is he depressed? Yes, I know you've got a scar on your face. What's yeah. that like? That's when I was playing football when I was three, so I smashed the window and a piece of glass cut me. Yeah. So no after effect with that at all? No, sir. Just sign that for me then, will you? It's far as you did, yeah? Oh, just there. Yeah. I've got a reputation for being hard, but I wouldn't consider myself as as Rambo or anything like that. Blue lace-up shoes, white socks, brown belt, black... Flex. It's a nice side to me. It just takes some getting to know me, that's all it is. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It is. Right. When I got out in 80... January 88, I thought I'd be all right. Went, went to live with my girlfriend who I was with three and a half years. She had a baby and everything. But I just ended up getting drunk all the time and started fighting. Then anyway, we split up, started fighting a bit more, sent to a hostel in Liverpool, got thrown out of there. Is your activities um, as such, have you ever taken drugs? No, sir. Mainlined? Anything like that? Yes, sir. So we've had no contact? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist? No, sir. A school for behavioural problems? No, sir. Anything like that? What about uh, your health at the moment? Is there anything particularly worrying you about it? I see you smoke. Any cigarette behind yes. you? Yes, sir. But that's about it. I drink and smoke, but not both at the same time. OK, take your clothes off and hand them to the officer there, OK? Put a gown on then, kid. Don't let your 
keep these here. OK. I'll give it to the nurse and they'll issue to it as and when required. OK? OK. So you can take it, that with it. Well, That's your personal one. I'll give that to the nurse and they'll sort you out. OK? okay. Yeah. So you go through there, see the orderly, and he'll give you some clothes to wear. OK? okay. Is it blue? Hey. It bothers me to think that I might be coming back again. I said I wouldn't come back so many times and I have done. Even when it's only been remanded. I thought, well, I'd never end up back in, you know what I mean? I have done time and time again. I'll take that with you. Yeah. Yeah. So Shower. Come back, get yourself dressed, then we'll sort you out with some food, okay? God, I'm not one of them people that can listen to being mouth off that. I expect a few few fights while I'm in here. I expect at least a few. I lose about 56 days at the most. That's what I'm looking for anyway. <laughs> Hi, come in. Close the door, young man. Take a seat. Watch your knees on the table when you sit down there. There's a tendency to bump your knees. Who are you, then? Robert Bolt, sir. Barclay. Oh, Robert. What's your date of birth? 76, 72. First time inside? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, sir. Been on remand? No, sir. Oh, oh. Big bad prison, then. Bit of a shock, is it? Yeah. Where? Oh, Where's the Epstein there, young man? You're J.R. to Luton Crown, is that correct? Pardon? J.R. to Luton Crown Court. I'm not going to Crown Court, no. You're not? Shrewsbury, yeah. Shrewsbury? Yeah. Shrewsbury Crown. Date to be fixed. Shrewsbury. Oh, I see. Came from Shrewsbury. Right. We've got of yours three bangles, nail clippers, black plastic wristwatch, which is broken, red plastic comb, and a plastic cross on some string. No, that's, that's not mine. I thought you said Wren. Who? Wren. No, West. Oh, West! One from Shrewsbury, three from Derby. What's your name, young man? West. West. Are you J.R. DeLuke from Crown Court? Yes. Correct. Right. I've got three bangles, nail clippers, okay, black plastic yeah. wristwatch, which is broken, red plastic comb and a plastic cross on a string. Yes. Yes? You agree. Have you got anything in your pockets? If so, empty your pockets out onto there. Right. Anything Six. else? No. No? You're still adamant you're not guilty? No, I'm not guilty for it. Does that make you feel bitter? Does it bit? It's not like my missus just had my kid. Sorry? My missus just had my kid, so it does make me feel bitter. How long? How old is the child? Month old. Oh, that's a bit of a blow, isn't it? Yeah. Will she be able to come and see you? Yeah. From Nottingham? Yeah. How will she get here? Yeah, um, I'd rather bring her up in the car. Have you sent her a VO? Yeah. So, um... What is that, a reception visit, is it? I don't know. Well, will it be inside the first seven days, will it, your visit? Yeah. Have you ever been depressed, deliberately injured yourself, or attempted suicide? Well, I've been depressed, but not attempted suicide or anything, but I'm sort of that person that likes to be by myself sometimes, now and then, but I'd like to mix with friends and make friends. Do you think you'll be OK on an ordinary location here? Yes, sir. Is the last disappointed at you getting sent down? Yeah. She is. Do you think she'll stand by you? I'm sure she will. Yeah, she she will. There's no risk of a dear John, then. You know what a dear John is, don't yeah. you? <laughs> no, I have no. gone, huh? <laughs> no, no, no risk of that. No risk? No. Well, that's good, because a lot of the youths can't handle that. I don't know.
miss anything from me. Uh, New Year, yeah. I've been home for a few of them. About three, four years ago, the last New Year I spent at home. That's about it. Don't mind being in for Christmas, birthdays. Been home from before. I miss not being able to see my son, but I've only seen him once anyway. I've turned them inside out. Stick it back on again. Drop your underpants to your ankles. Turn all the way around. All the way around. OK. Pull them up. Those things have been hard as night. The kid out there, you know what I mean? The kids out there, you know what I mean? Eh? We should think about that, shouldn't you? I know I should have. You didn't think about it while I was on the other night regretting it? Well, that one was it? Why don't you regret it coming in? No, but usually if you've got a kid, it makes you think twice, don't it? Yeah, but that's how much you just caught pregnant. I was being sent down as he was born. Yeah, but you knew she was pregnant, so you still yeah. had that, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't know she was going to get caught for it, did you? You get caught for everything. The way I see it, if you come in here, all girlfriends, whatever, they, they obviously see you in a different view when you come in here and after you've got out. Uh, what do you mean? What are they, what's the different view then? Well, I'd say 60%, if you're going out with somebody and you come in here and you write her a letter, she doesn't want to know it. I'd say 60% of it. Blokes in here get them sort of letters. Not one of the lucky ones. Some some girls will stick by her, others won't. All depends. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Taylor. Come here, stand there, young man. Right. We've got no property of yours whatsoever and no cash. If you've got any cash, you can throw on a paper transaction, OK? Sure. Yeah. You do 15 months, eh? Sure. Right, no valuable property at all. Sign. Just there. Now to eight years. I just learned how to spell my name. Sign again. Because the way I've been through all my life, I ain't had no O levels or A levels or nothing like that. Been, but I've never been to school in my life, so I can't argue the read and wrote. Well, so when, you, when I used to go to school, I was just wasn't interested. I used to always fight with stuff and that. You got anything in your pockets? No, no, I've got the camera. I can't find a job. It's not very easy to find a job these days. I want a record like mine. So I just have to think for it. End up in a place like this. We're capable of holding approximately 360 sentenced young offenders, about 480 remands, and our hospital will hold about 57. I've got a grand total staff of 280. That's prison officers, governor grades, hospital staff, administrators, psychologists, educationists, chaplains, and many others. I mean, if I went on with the whole list, I think we must, may well be here all day. Listen to what the officer's got to say when you get in there, son. Ah! In there, 
For PE, we offer them workshops. They've got the opportunities to go on groups to assist them. They can go on to a chaplain's group. They can go on to learn about computers. I mean, there are so many things we could offer. I think the grave danger. I think somebody said to me earlier today, if we're not careful, it will look like I'm presenting you with a brochure for the place. Well, I thought that it'll be sort of like prison beatings going up and everything, but so far it's all right. I feel like. When I'm by myself, to cry and everything. Well, that's about it. My mum and dad disowned me when I was five years old. I mean, in case it's 1976. Pretty mean, in care what's done this to me. Well, they treated me, and that. Well, I got accused for screwing the house twice. I only screwed it once. It was on a copper's house. No. Well, uh, jury and soul didn't got some money. So the DHSS were messing me about with my money, and we had nothing to live on. And no way my kids were going to start off with the DHSS. No chance. <laughs> Single one of them photos. I can't get them until I've got a camera. Local! Is he moving? Local, correct? Yes. Right. You've been sentenced to six months imprisonment by Derby Crown Court today. Mm -hmm. Okay. You agree with that? Yes. Obviously, they're not to blame, but he said it. I mean, the company were asking for it, and uh, he just said basically he's not going to give me a long term. He just wants to give me a taste of hearing the, the prison door slam and sort of sort of make sure it didn't happen again. While you're here, your number will be GM0679. Okay. Tell me what it is again. GM six. 
0679. That's it, you've got it. Do it! Do it. Come here, young man. All right. Yeah. How long have you been out? Two months. Two months. Not well, mate. Do you know your new number? GK0729. Well done, young man. Now, we've got nothing belonging to you except £2.51. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you're doing three years, eh? Yeah. yeah. Right. £2.51. Someone's done your clothing, which you've signed for. Have you got anything in your pockets? Anything at all? Well, well whatever you've got, put it on the desk and we'll... No. You sure? Nothing. Are you wearing any jewellery? Rings, watches, necklaces, earrings, nothing at all. You got nothing whatsoever. Right, do it. Smith, Smith, here, young man. You are 509, Smith, are you? 509, yes, sir. Correct. Right. No property of yours whatsoever and no cash. If you've got any cash, it'll come through on a paper transaction. Okay. Uh, parole tomorrow 30 months, correct? Yes, yeah, right. Just sign just there for me. You've already signed your property card. Yeah. And you've got your spectacles. Is there any demo left on? Yes, I'm just checking this on. When I was younger, I was bullied, so now I just give the cheek back. So then they might just stop us or ask me for a fight or anything. I'll just back out. So I'm not causing any trouble or anything. Blue and grey pullover, yes, sir. grey and red striped tie. Yes, it's in my pocket, sir. Okay, take it out then, please. Uh, blue suede lace up shoes, white black socks. Suede. Biggie Pond, yes, black suede lace up. Well, I used to get chucked out of school windows and everything, <laughs> but never done me any harm. Well, it did, but as my mum says, just let them carry on. And sooner or later, they'll get fed up of it and just leave you alone. Uh, I'm going to take this one down to Sanctuary. Uh, Jameson, Clark, and Northampton. Uh, Good morning. 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 Let's grab a kick ball, uh, and a jump pack, and then the change room and the shower. Done it. Change. There you go. This way. Shower, when you're on a shower, come back and get dressed, and then we'll take you through and get some food, okay? Okay, that's it. We've got a 20 year old um, young man who's on unconditional bail, um, went to court this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a few friends go with him. He, he says to me that um, they took um, quite a few tablets with, well, he took quite a few tablets with him, and if he got sent down, he was going to um, take an overdose. Um, if he got off, um, and he'd already taken uh, the tablets, he was going to make himself sick. Yeah. I can't find out what type of tablets they were. He's not very clear on that. I beg your pardon? I'm James. I'm Unit. Yeah, I've got shoes in the pocket. What sort of soles you got on them? I've seen it officer. I said they're all right. Yeah, so if they're not black. If they're not black, I'll issue them to you. What sort of trainers are they? Mighty. Mighty. And you understand, I understand from the officer that you tried to take some tablets. What tablets were they? No, I wasn't trying at all. I just I did I did think about it and I went down to the shop. I mean the packet's still full. I wouldn't be, I mean, I've been here eight hours now. If I've taken all those tablets, I wouldn't be sending it like this. Yes, yeah, so have you taken anything? I've taken anything. I mean, I did know I'd get caught in the end, but, you know, I'm still not so sure it wasn't worth it. Because <laughs> it was a good six months. <laughs> Some of them have, have perhaps not uh, been living very well. They've been on the streets, and uh, they come in with scabies or skin infections. Um, 
lads come in who um, are asthmatic, um, haven't had treatment for quite a while because they've been living rough, etc., etc. <laughs> He's very much uh, a lad who's close to his family and he's very close to his mother in particular. He's prone in actual fact to um, outbursts of tears and uh, all the sob story came out really. Um, I shouldn't really say a sob story because the lad was obviously upset. It's his first time in prison. He's, in my opinion, um, an individual who could be bullied in the sense in in the environment of a prison especially if he went on to own a location he's a weak character he could be manipulated and i think once the stronger inmates saw that he could be manipulated it would make it even worse my attitude has always been the same since I've been in the prison service. If you take a person's liberty from them and you say how they will spend their day, I would say that that is, that is the punishment, is the removal. We don't have to punish when we've got them here. The punishment is the removal from their normal life. Uh, see you next year then, right? <laughs> We try and make life as normal and as reasonable as possible in here, but by the very nature of the place, the very nature of our, our work, that isn't totally possible. But what we try to do is, we, as I've said to you before, to treat them as human beings. And I think that is essential, people who have got strengths and weaknesses, and to recognise them. Come on, wait, you make it. off cops on the socks. Come on. Come on! Come on, Kate! Come on, that arsehole! Give him a kick! Rackberry, unit 10. Yeah. Yeah, alright, you've got all your kit. Oh. Right, you want all your bedding, sir. Yeah. Okay, all wants to be folded up and taken downstairs. Oh, all your kit packed. 
And I want your razor, knife, fork, spoon and mug taken as well. visit me, but it's a bit too far, 350 odd mine. So I'm hoping to get a probation visit and get a job in here, earn my tobacco money and everything, to keep my mind occupied and let time go quicker. saying here, just get your head down and do your time. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to go straight from now on. Brackenbury? Morning, young man. Take a seat. Oh, you got 18 months, did you? Yeah. At um, Lincoln Crown. Notts Crown. Notts Crown, was it? Yeah. I've, got, I've got Lincoln. I've must have been. Trial uh, was at Lincoln. Trial was at Lincoln, so it was really Nottingham Crown sitting at Lincoln, wasn't it, really? Okay, lads. Smith Taylor. Smith Unit 5. Yes, sir. And Taylor Unit 4. You want to tell me something about the offence? Like what? What it was. What have we got? You said on there, crime. You didn't tell me what you did. Really? What was it? ABHs. Assault on police, was it? And a barman. And a barman. And a bird I used to go out with. And a bird you used to go out with. A bit of jack the lad, are we? Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah you a bit of jack the lad. Yeah, you've got a long history, haven't you? ABH, ABH. Taking and driving away, threatening behaviour. I've been in Liverpool for six months in a probation hostel. Yeah. How'd you get on in the probation hostel? Broke it. So I just built there for two years. Well, I couldn't stand their rules or what? Pakistan youth offered me out in front of the office. And there was a load of old people, so I dropped him. You don't like Pakis? So it wasn't that. Well, I don't know. But he went screaming in the office, making out it was a prejudice attack, which it wasn't. But the uh, staff didn't want to know, so I was thrown out. Are these your um, socks, are they? Smith? I've only got my arms, sir. Yeah, I'll get them. Taylor. They might start walking out the window. Yeah, Taylor. Got any preference for you, Nick? Preference? Yeah. I'd like to go on 10. I've heard that's a nice unit. Have you? Well, you heard about 10 then? Well, that's clean. People are better aware. Well, there's no difference between any of the units. Well, there are. Some people walk around with hard heads, don't they? Making out the summing. Who walks don't around with hard heads? Like. Who walks around with hard heads? Well, they do, don't they? There were some lads down in reception yesterday with big man. Well, well they've all got jack the lads in it. Well, well I don't walk around doing out like that. I don't pick on people. It's only when someone that does something towards me that I drop them. Right, you're standing at the table, lads. Just stick your kit on the floor, please. Right, Smith. Have so, so your razor there. Knife, fork, spoon, and mug over this side, please. All right. You want your bedding over there, okay? Then all the rest of your kit, I want you to take with you and go into the TV room and sit down. Okay, off you go. Taylor. What was this burglary now? 15 months, it must have been a big one. No, I got 12 months for it, but I got three months. Number seven for not going. Three months for not going? It's grand car. We're breaking bail? Yeah, I think go. Bit stupid, wasn't it, to break bail? Oh, yeah. Uh, Why'd you break bail then? Because I found out I was up in front of him. I didn't want to go up in front of him. 
You like to choose your own judge then? No, I've only walked out with less than two years. You walked out with less than two years? You don't think <laughs> boy, but... Give me about four years, are you? Well, I'll slash up or nothing like that. I'm doing my bird easy. Just when you got somebody who loves you on the outside and you're in here. Find a case you don't lose them. You living with a girlfriend still? Yeah. What's she gonna do now you're inside? I don't know. Were you employed? No. Looking for a job. Looking for a job. Could have had a chance to get one, but I got sent down. Oh. Is she gonna stand by you then? Yeah. Yeah. Sure? Positive. Oh. At the door, turn right lads, off you go to the canteen. <laughs> I'm going to put you up on the on, on on the units up there. You can't go to open condition because you've got too many twocks. Too many twocks? Yeah. I ain't got no twocks. You have? I am. Taking and driving away? That's not me, sir. That's not you, is it? No, I haven't even been up for a twock before. Except for in 1980. Sure. Well, they got it here. That was a jag. Mm. It's the only twock I've had. I've had one twock. Well, they've got twock on down here. That was it, on a jag? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the only twock I've had, and that was about five years ago. Flynn, come on in, young fella. Come on. All right. Have a seat. Take a seat down there. Now then, you got five months yesterday, didn't you? Ah. The county court down at the the, um, the county down at um, the castle. Thirty months. Oh, you got the wrong fella. This is not Flint, is it? No. no. I thought you said Lee. So. No, I want Flint. Oh, Cut so. that one. Cut. I was living with my parents, and then I went to live next door, and then he booted me out. You see. Mm. So. What's he boot you out for? Kicking over the traces or what? No. Because the social wouldn't pay for the help pay for the lodge and everything, you see. Mm. So. Didn't you get much backup from the social then? No, yeah. sir. Mm. That caused the robbery? Yes, sir. Mm. Was it a bad one? Well, to, to the court's consent, yeah. And mm. Well, I think it's the lowest of the low, sir. So. Pum? I thought it's the lowest of the low, sir. So. Mm, so you're ashamed of it, are you? Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Was it a mugging? Yes, sir. Yeah, I thought it might be. Canteen Unit 9. Internal transfers. Yes. Just in time, they were just leaving. Oh. Okay, who's first? 418 Who? 418 Yes, 125. Would you like? Tobacco, sir, please. Mm -hmm. There's a matches. Oh, found some matches. That's 125. Okay. Sir. Same again, oh, then, please, sir. Under there. 5029. Smith. Good luck. 502 509 Smith. That's the one. It came out in the end that he'd done a mugging, which, as he said, is the lowest of the low. I should imagine that he probably snatched an old person's handbag or something like that. There we are. Okay, buddy. All right, see you later, Tyler. See you later, Tyler. See you later, Take a seat in there, kid. See you on the car. Come on.
Well on, sir. Brattenbury's been kit changed, he's been canteened. There's letter sheets here in his file, sir. Okay. Okay, sir, thank you very much. Close the door, young man. Take a seat there. Yeah. Mind your knees on the desk as you sit down, because uh, there's a tendency to bump them. You again, young Jackson. Let's go. Oh, you were here a few months ago, weren't you? Let's go. How long ago was that since you were here? May, June time. Let's go. May, June. We released you in May or June. Let's go. You obviously like it here. You're back already. Ain't too bad. Prison life is how you make it. You can either have it quiet or rough, depending on how you make it. I mean, it's best to just keep yourself to yourself and not make too friend friendly with other people because they're not going to probably not be here that long and you're not going to be here that long. And it's just basically keep yourself to yourself and just get your head down and do your bird. That's it. I went to court the last time and got my probation order back. And this time I'm in for the same thing, breach of probation and criminal damage. And because I was, it was a different judge the last time, I got the original judge that sentenced me first time for the breach of probation, and he re-sentenced me for all my original offences, which were criminal damage, arson and theft. Breach of probation, which he told us about when I asked him why he was back so quickly, he said the sentence was still standing over, was still uh, over his head. What he was saying was I'd rather go down and do six months, which they have a fair idea that uh, they won't get a long sentence for charges like this, and uh, put everything behind them. It may be a good sign, this, really, that he wants to clear everything up, but you've got to be concerned that he's not fit to carry out, a, or he doesn't see fit to carry out a probation order. I mean, yes, he could be on a downhill trend. You say you've got a steady job, what's yeah. that? I was working just on the new prison unit. What, working on the side? Yeah, plastering. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. How long have you been there? Two weeks. Oh, just two weeks? Yeah. Did you realise you were coming in shortly? No. Yeah, come in. Close the door, young man. Take a seat there. Mind your knees on the table. When you yeah. sit down, you're likely to bump them. Yeah. Who are you? Vincent Pleasance. Vincent Pleasance. What's your date of birth? The first and fourth, certainly. First time in? Yeah. How are you finding it? All right. So far. All right. Yeah. Mm. What prison have you been at? You've been to Norwich, have you? Yeah. yeah. You had problems there, didn't you? No. Yeah, had little problems. I was scared at first, did it? Scared? Yeah. Anybody say anything to you? No. Did you apply for protection from the knowledge? Yeah. Was that because you were scared or because somebody yeah. said something to you? I was scared. You were scared? Yeah. Well, I was at King's Lynn. They asked me, do you go on the 40 freeze? I said, yeah. Just for it, I'll see how it goes in it. I was all right. You knew what 43s was? Yeah. Hmm. What were you charged with? 
Bud? What's one of your challenges with this time? Touching two little girls up. What did they call us in court? Indecent assault? Yeah. Yeah. What do you tell people you're in for? Burglary. You're not so daft, are you? Huh? No. You're not. And uh, they've all accepted it, yeah. you know that? Mm. Yeah. But yeah. you got to stick to that. No matter how close a friend mm. you get, don't say any different. Yeah. Because I'll tell you now, he'll be on production. He'll have to find out any different. You know that, don't yeah. you? So strictly burglary with confidence, that's what you say. Yeah. Where uh, did the offences take place? In your own home or in a neighbour's home? Or in a neighbour's home. Neighbour's home? Yeah. So that means that there's no problem as regards to leasing you to the address you come from. You can go back to your home place. Yeah. yeah. And what about the people in the locality? Are you afraid of sort of a backlash when you go out? Are you afraid no. of the neighbours? No. No? No, you're afraid of them. Mm. Will you see the kids when you go out again, those kids that were involved? Don't know, sir. You would hope not? Hope not. <laughs> Do you realise you did wrong? Yeah, I know I did wrong, sir. Yeah. What worries me a little bit about you is you don't seem to have any sort of remorse or shame about what happened, and I mean it's a very serious thing. I know. Well, why haven't you got any remorse or shame? Or... I don't know. I don't know, sir. So what you're telling me is that there's great risk you do the same thing again if you were topped up. Oh, do the same thing again. Oh, you well, realise the damage to the children, the, the yeah. seriously mental damage, don't you? Yeah. I'm not sure I'll get drunk again. Pardon? I'm not sure I'll get drunk again. I was worried. I might find out, I might get beat up and all that. Uh, I've been there uh, a month, that's all right. Nobody, nobody don't know yet and, and all that. If the boy, as I expected, was a little bit dumb, if that was the case, there was a great risk that he would tell uh, the peer group at, in the unit that uh, I'm in for sex offences and there's little girls and I did this and start to bluff about it and he, he wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, he'd be beaten up. There is no doubt about it. Uh, it would be beaten up. And what you hope is that if he can bluff his way, that he will survive. You treat with caution everything and anything about the inmate, don't you? Because if they're compulsive liars, the chances are that everything they've told reception staff and everything that's been recorded about them right the way through, uh, there can be deficiencies in it. So, yes, you treat anything and everything to do with the email with a certain amount of caution. Yeah. It's me here. Don't help. It's me here again. I'll just go through a few facts here, yeah. Lee Colin Smith, yeah? Yes, sir. Now, for a start, we, we do away with the say bit. Okay. Right, Mr. McGuire, you know. We're not in the army. I'm your group officer. I'm not your father. I'm not here to hand you through the sentence. I'm here to help you, that's all. All right? Have you dis you've been in the induction business. Have you decided what you want to do? Yes. Well, I've been to go into kitchens. And on Thursday, a night class of pottery. Yeah. I don't want you to go in the kitchens. I don't think you're quite the type for our kitchens. These kitchens aren't like ordinary kitchens. You're working with a gang of lads who are a bit wise, you know, and you're a first time inside. Generally, the lads who go in the kitchens are third or fourth time inside. They know the ropes and you know, without being insulting to your physical presence, you may end up the butt of the jokes, do you understand? Mm -hmm. What I think is best for you is to go on second chance. Perhaps at the end of two or three months, we'll have another look at it and then put you in there. Um, but I really don't think you should go on there. Now, have you had any approaches on here? Do you smoke? Yes. You smoke? Have you had any tobacco off anybody yet? No, no, I'm not, no. No, you know the score on the yeah, tobacco, don't you? Yeah, because say, if you buy an eight, you've got to give a quarter back. That's right, yeah. You know, just yeah. says, oh, you can stuff yeah. that up your bum. Yeah, well, if you can stay, stick it up your bum, but you may get some, we'll give you it. And if you give it them back, they will still feel as though you've got it. Now, this is, there's, a, there's a jungle law in this place, and part of it 
is if you don't play ball, you get your head stove in. We try and stop it as best we can, but we know it goes on. Don't borrow. It doesn't matter if you have to pretend you don't smoke, don't borrow. Don't you lend out to other people. If you get yourself a personal cassette in, keep it under your hat, hide it in your cell when you come out of it. Don't let anybody know, because if you get a personal and you get a good tape in, and one of the, let's say, stronger lads decides he wants to tape, he'll take it off you. You know, and it doesn't matter if you, as much as you want not to give it to him, he'll take it off you. You know. Now, if it gets, if, you, if that does happen to you, you can come and see us, and we'll sort it out. Right. As best we can. No, it's this lad called Bo. You know Bo? That's yeah. Next door to me. When I was getting picked on first day, he says, "Right then, just leave yeah. it out. If you want to pick on him, pick on me as well, because I'll just knock some heads together." Yeah, that's fine. You know, right at the time being, but don't let him come to you in a couple of weeks' time and say, "Well, look, I've been looking after you." I want some payment back. I want some payment back. You know, it's like a type of insurance. It goes on. We stop it as much as we can, but we can't stop it all the way. You know? They will tell you all sorts in there. They will send you in for milk tokens. They'll Discount send you in for tickets, tickets for the disco. You've had it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there it goes. Just if they see you going along with your glasses on and you think you're easy meat, they're going to make you the butt of the jokes. If, they, if you fall for it, if you've got any problem with your parole, you come and see us. You don't come and see them. We're the guys to say, because we know what's good. You understand? Yeah. Right, now, as I said, if you get any problems, uh, you come and see me. If anybody's hassling you and you can't handle it, before you start doing anything silly, come and see me. Now, have you got any problems at the minute? Just want to go home. You want to go home, yeah. Right, right. I think it's a good thing, perhaps, that Smith's feeling weepy. Um, he's now sitting considering what he actually did, and what he did was, was, was unacceptable. It's, it's not acceptable in today's society. And if we could bottle this little bit of time that he's feeling sorry for himself, I think we could, uh, we could send him out in a, in, a, in a month's time, and he wouldn't come back again. What may happen is in a, in, a, in a month's time, he got used to the regime and it becomes tedious for him then. You know, that sort of boy, a first time offender in, this first week, first two weeks, will be a great leveller for him. I have a deal of sympathy for the way he feels, to a point, but I can understand how an 80-year-old woman must feel having a young thug come along and take her back. It does sometimes uh, get to me when I see these boys feeling sorry for themselves, but I sometimes wonder whether they're actually feeling... They're not, are they feeling sorry for the victim, or are they feeling sorry for themselves because they're banged away, away from mum and dad? <laughs> Hopefully by the end of um, the sentence we can give him a bit more backbone, if you like, to be able to stand up for himself. Don't struggle, don't struggle. One more. That's it. That's it. Come on, press. Keep the elbows in. Down again. Elbows in. Press. Good. That's all on your own. We don't want him to go out a, a thug. We want him to go out to a better person. And if he can stand up to some of the pressures that he's going to get inside here, because he will get pressures inside here, um, all the better for him. Right the way through, both arms together. Lock the elbows, good. One more. 
And in three. There you go. Lay on, Mr. T. Good night. Night. It's in ten. Room ten. Room ten. Oh, there we go, boss. Room 10. Where's that? Down here on the way. Room 10. 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 Right, if I call you Lee. Yes. Okay. What about visits? You get anybody who comes see you? Well, we're in up in Scotland, you see. So I was hoping. Well, if, if, I've had two letters off them, and it says I'll send a radio down. And they come and visit me one time, but I don't know when that'll be. Yeah. So, are you expecting visits from anybody? Yeah, mum and dad's pretty soon. Like, mum, my mum and sister will chat to each other for ages. They could nag on for years. <laughs> but I couldn't put up with that. But, well, I could now. Because I feel like what I've done on them. When I get close back to mum and dad. But. I like to stay with my dad and that, but just wish I was at home. Yeah. Do they live together? Yeah. Yeah, they are. yeah. How do they feel about you being here? Upset. They want me to climb and everything. Pardon? Upset. They want me to climb. Yeah. yeah. So they, but they, they haven't blanked you out. They're still. Yeah. yeah good. That's good. So they're going to stick by you. Just keep me. Yeah. Keep my chin up. That's right. Yeah. You're a smith. Yeah. Good. You come on. Yeah. OK. I think one of the things you'll find as you're in here for the first time and away from home is that you'll go through what we call the pain of homesickness, you know, being cut off from people outside. Now, that's a, quite a painful thing and difficult to handle at times, but it's good because it means that some of the things which you've taken for granted outside mean more to you than you realise. And it's as well to rediscover that, that you know, friendship, family and so on are mean a lot to you. So, um, thank God for that, uh, that, that you feel that pain, rather than sort of wonder what's the matter with you. Uh, one of the things we talk about in our studies, of course, is that the question of forgiveness. And one of the things which you may feel is that um, it's difficult to forgive yourself. Um, but we believe you've, nothing is too serious to be forgiven that God does love us and care for us and he will forgive. And we can learn then to forgive ourselves and regrow as a person and in our own self-esteem. So when we leave here, um, we go out new people with a different aspect of life. And, 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 That's and what and my dad said, said. Well, you can forgive, but you can never forget. That's right. Well, the forgetting is, is one part which helps us to stay on the straight and narrow mm -hmm. afterwards. But, uh, uh, the forgiving is um, something which um, is important to us because then the guilt's removed and we also ask then for help and prayers for the person who's been our victim and we try to uh, understand them and, uh, and how they may be feeling at the time and ask for their forgiveness too. Okay. Is there anything you want to speak to me about at this point? Nothing at all? Okay. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, a bit. Get your head down. Shut your face and have a cookie. No one's getting fancy until tomorrow. Have you got cancer? It's the first time I've ever been sentenced to prison. You've just got to do, just got to pay for what I did, haven't I? Hmm. Yeah. I've got enough burn to last me till tomorrow. I'm in for robbery, attempted, and um, burglary. 
One, the burglary was of a dwelling house in my own town, Claythorpe's. And the robbery was on North license. I was a lookout. I got 21 months for the robbery. I got nine months for the burglary. Making a total of 30 months. That was on September the 22nd at Grimsby Crown Court. 23 hours. I, know, I liked yeah. it. Can you get any more out? Yeah, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get any more? <laughs> but you know, it's a hard life, don't you? Why don't you chew the roach, man? <laughs> I will in a minute. My mum's remarried. I don't know where my father is, but my mother was really disgusted with me. You know, I can't blame her. I mean, there's nothing like this gone, gone on in our family before. I come along, I'm sort of like the black sheep of the family. You know, I've let the whole family down. The stepfather, me and him haven't spoke for five years anyway, you know, so... <laughs> there was just a normal reaction from him, you know. <laughs> and... My mother, she was really disgusted with me and I made a promise to her that I wouldn't, you know, take anything anymore. <laughs> no, it, it got his straw, it was a proper long one. It, it put the end of the fag in, in the bottom line. I think it was a Sunday and the canteen was on the Monday. He was roasting like an idiot. And they said, I'm going to take one more out of it. And he sucked it, and the thing went straight up the pipe, straight in the back of his throat, like, oh, I That was in bits, I was on the floor, oh, I was not believe it. Oh. I can't blame my stepfather. I can't, because, I mean, it would be unfair to blame him. I mean, he took, he took on the responsibility of my mother, me, and my two brothers, even though my two brothers were both older than me. Both of those two were at boarding school, though. I was the one left at home. Pleasant, you know what it was, don't you? What? The adding for stunning the chunky chicken with the chickens. <laughs> Bob. It's it, it got the bill, that is. It's got the bill. Bob! 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 Who's a PO caterer? We'll be in to show you a film and talk about the kitchen and hygiene. I had a checkbook of my own and uh, I started getting false credit out on that, uh, cashing checks until all that had gone. I started then on another identity, did the same thing, carried on doing that for about three months before I got caught. Uh, I got caught for that offence, which was uh, fifteen thousand pounds credit fraud. Right, well, lads. Anybody been in Glen Parver before? So, yeah. What kind of sentence? Is no, it the sentence not hit me yet, so I don't really know how I feel. A bit fed up. I thought the sentence were too long for what you know, like for what I was in for. But you've got to accept that. You know, I've just got to do do the time what I've got. It's not really the sent actually getting three and a half years. It's not not hit me yet. So until it does, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. Anybody doing? A decent time, which is say 12, 18. Three and a half years. Three and a half years? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I went down to London for like uh, an acid house party, you know, the party what you have down there. And uh, on the way back, when I was coming back to Leicester, I went to a train station, King's Cross, to come back. And uh, that was with a few other lads. Obviously, I, I was high on drugs, like, I was speeding and tripping. And uh, I was talking to my mates, and this, this bloke, I mean, Canadian, obviously drunk, you know, I passed four in the morning, I don't know what he was doing, never. And uh, it was just started flashing off his money, you know, he just started pulling it out. And, like, when he's speeding and tripping, like, you don't know what you're doing. And uh, just a sight of money, you know. I just went up, all, all we'd done was, I, I just walked up to him, like, told him, to, you know, I pushed him into a taxi, let's go for a drink, like, he took me for a drink. On the way back, you know, just got him, just robbed him, and, like, while I was robbing the geese, he said to me, he just says, uh, look, you can, you can have what you want, but leave me train ticket. And that's what he said to me, so. All you need is a checkbook, a check card, driving licence, whether it's your own or someone else's. Walk into a bank, cash checks, walk into a shop, Burton's for instance, and uh, you can just walk up to the counter, try and leather jacket, say I want that interest, uh, internet credit terms. Fill out a form, it's not even rang through to a computer. It's, it's just accepted by a manager on spot. Uh, any, any electrical shop can just walk in, they'll ring up, and uh, all you gotta do is say you're in a, a job, you've been there three years, you're earning X amount of money, preferably over 8,000. Uh, 
preferably a place you've got a responsible thing like uh, you're a manager. And uh, that's it. They won't even question you. Like my mates were coming up and saying, look, have you tried this new drug? I said, I've said no, you know. And I said, well, try one. And my mate just, just gave me one. And I, I took one. And I thought, well, like, if, if that happens off one, you know, surely. I just kept snowboarding, like, I'd say, six or seven at a time now. It's, 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 it's a bad drug, but, like, once you're on it, you know, like, the experience, what you have off, off acid is nothing, you know, completely different. It's like you take it again and, like, your mates are having it, so you take it. I'm, like, if, if I'm on my own, like, with my girlfriend, like, then acid or speed I don't touch or skag. But it's just like when I'm with my mates and what have you. Although the skag was becoming a bit more, a bit more pusher. Taking it like every day, spending 30, 40 quid a day on it. Right, lads, we're going to talk about a group officer now. Now, do you all know what your group officer is? Who your group officer is? Mm. No. Yeah. Well, your group officer is one of your unit staff. He's got eight, perhaps ten inmates. Ten of you lads. And he's your officer, is your first line of contact with anything in the prison or outside. Any problems, you see him. Drug abuse, drinks, alcohol, glue sniffing, all them kind of things. Temper problems. You're antisocial, you find it hard to make friends or speak to people to your peer group. Or we've got people who can help you. You sign here, I agree to the above sentence plan. You sign your name, your group officer signs his in. This will be looked on every two months by the governor on your bi-monthly report. Your group officer's a bi-monthly report, that goes to the governor, and any comments he's got to make or any alterations he puts down in your record. touch on the subject now that's in the front of a lot of people's minds when they come into prison and also your parents' minds about AIDS. Right, everybody's heard of AIDS and because of the rumours and the stories the prison service made a, a video about it. I'll tell you the facts you want to know and if you watch this film through to the end I promise you you'll have all the facts you need to protect yourselves and other people from AIDS. And after that it's up to you because no matter how much the experts go on about it, there's nothing they can actually do to stop the spread of AIDS unless you help. And that's your choice. But if you think about it, it's impossible for HIV to get inside your body unless you help it. Unless you help it by screwing around or by not using rubbers, condoms, or by sharing works. I know when I must have caught it, it must have been on the one or two occasions when I jumped in a car, driven right across to North London or somewhere to score. I've scored, I've been as sick as a dog, and uh, I've just fixed up there and then at the guy's house thinking, oh, it's just the ones, you know, they look pretty clean, you know what I mean? But there's one situation that you can't control, being raped. You fucking stay away from me. Yeah. There's nothing you make a do, because there's no way to protect himself. 
Maybe, but any rapist can take it from me. He's putting himself at risk as much as his victim. Well, although most of what we've said so far applies to men and women, there are some extra considerations for women. That's crazy, man. As far as sex between women is concerned, it's very difficult for HIV to be transmitted this way. Right. Now we come to the bit you're all worried about. Fighting. Oh, look at that! Fights are dangerous for all sorts of reasons. It's not just the one that gets beaten up that's at risk from blood. The one dishing out the beating is in danger too. Blood can transmit all sorts of infections. HIV is only one of them. You may find it hard to believe that no one in any jail anywhere has ever been infected with HIV during a fight or by being bitten. Experts believe that the blood can't prove it. The blood itself flows outwards, it doesn't flow inwards, you know, so even in that situation you probably wouldn't catch it, you know, but then I think that's be serious, so, you know, you just don't want to risk that, do you? So, if you come into contact with someone else's blood, however it happens, wash it off as soon as possible with plenty of water. Well, what about when you get out of prison? Even someone who's very experienced sexually can still get it wrong. Before I know you as a condom, right? And uh, the best plan of my business is to use one. You know you have to roll the thing on your penis. I just I roll the thing and I try to cut the condom like this. I put it on my head. <laughs> and, and, and the girl was in bed looking at me. She was laughing. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Gently put the closed <coughs> end of onto the tip of your penis. If the is the right way up, its end will be coming from inside the ring. That's the rolled up bit. Still holding the end of the condom on the tip of your penis. Slowly but firmly roll the condom down to the base of your penis. My name is Kath Howells, and I'm the Deputy Education Officer here, OK? You've been brought here this afternoon to do two things. One is to find out a little bit about what education can offer you in terms of courses or classes during the day. And the other, and this is the not-so-interesting bit for you, is to do two tests for us, an English and a maths test. If, if you haven't got... If you haven't got any qualifications, just put a line through that. Put, put, put there, put yeah. N, stroke, and yeah. I can put your, your early state release on your video. Yeah. 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 The type of school you last attended, now, was that could have been the community college? Com uh, comprehensive? Secondary modern? Grammar school? That's a grammar school. Grammar school, okay. So that's what you put in there. All right, grammar school in there. GRA. GRA. Excuse me. There you go. Okay. Did you take any qualifications? I don't know if I passed any. I don't know. You, you don't know? Mm -hmm. Leave it blank for the moment, then, OK? Vincent John Pleasance. EDR, 16th of the 3rd, 90. Yeah. That's the sentence given to you by the judge? 12 months. Right, so 12 months goes in there, OK? Now, your offences, um, I believe they were for indecent assault, yeah. times two, yeah. Are you having any problems on the units? Do, do the people on the units no. know about that? No, I don't know. They don't know? No. What do you tell them that you're in for? Burglary. OK. Has the unit talked to you about that? Yeah. About keeping it quiet? Yeah. Good. So you're not getting any hassle? No. Oh, that's good. Fine. Have you done time before, Vince? No, just my first time. What the information that's given me is that you do have a few problems with your um, reading and also with your maths. Oh, yeah. Yeah? I've You're... never been to school, that's why. Haven't you? No. How did that I've happen? been to a school, but I just haven't been bothered to learn. I used to wake up. Really? Same as the three and a half years at that school. You didn't learn one thing. Do you want just to Just not learn... interested. You're not interested in helping yourself to improve those skills? I can't, because... 
just can't seem to learn, you know what I mean? I'm just not interested. When I sit down, I just can't stay. You find difficulty in concentrating? Yeah. I can't work with a party. I'm not used to it. You mean you can't work with other people? No. Well, that would be. It's the FM when they take the mickey out of me, you know what I mean? I understand that. And I can't promise you that it would be perfect if you came up to education. I'd be daft to do that, wouldn't I? Yeah. But what I can say is that you would be with boys who have exactly the same problems. You know Vince Pleasance? He's going to come up and he has the same problems. Right. So I can't help you because it's a test. Yeah. I think it's very difficult for lads who have limited educational ability to come in and do a test in a room full of lads, who, some of whom are not very sensitive about the less able boy. Um, so if a lad is having difficulties and if he's asking me for help, although I can't ask him, I can't tell him how to do the test, otherwise that loses its, loses its validity, I do try and answer the question sympathetically, tell him I can't help him sympathetically, and give him some hope that the following day during an interview um, I will be able to help him look at some of the, those difficulties and perhaps offer some help. Um, but in doing that, I do attempt to shield him from the other lads so that they can't hear what is being said. They can't point the finger and say he's a noddy uh, or any of the other, some of them less uh, savoury descriptions that they apply to the lads with, of um, slower learning ability. Can you keep the noise down until a few lads who haven't finished reach the end of their 20 minutes, please? When you got into trouble, um, Lee, were you unemployed or were you working? I was unemployed. What about your state of health? Are you generally quite healthy? Well, I smoke and drink, but, but that doesn't affect me all that much. I'm trying to regain my health again doing bodybuilding. Oh, you're doing that in the gym, are you? Yes, miss. Excellent. Now, hobbies and interests outside? Snooker. Mm -hmm. Playing darts. Do you play for a team? No. Mm -hmm. Well, me and my brother play snooker a lot and playing pool as well. Oh, cool. Going on the computer and going out socialising. Oh, you've got a busy life. It's mum and dad, you see. I don't usually make all that many friends, but mum and dad, there's, they're old, but they're really like, like tight to young, you see, so they take us out on a couple of drinks and everything. Sounds like you really like your mum and dad. Yes. Yeah. So you went from a GBH, which the courts only gave you a £10 fine mm -hmm. for, a nicking chocolate to a robbery. Mm -hmm. So what went wrong? I mean, that's really going up market. Is that too difficult a question? Mm-hmm. OK. All right. Are you having a hard time here? Well, I'm getting well with most people and everything, but I just wish I was out of here. It's tough. OK. I'm that's your 20 minutes. If you want to know the results of those, then I will give them to you in private tomorrow morning. What's the time, Miss? Okay. The um, two tests that you did yesterday, yeah. you did OK on. All right. About average. Well, the reading is slightly above average for this, for the prison. That's no difficulty at all. Um, maths is terrible. Well, the maths you came, you got 50. Out of what? Well, that was a percentile of 50. So your actual score, I'll tell you your actual score, is 24 out of 40, which gave you a percentile of 50. So there are a few problems there. Yeah. yeah. It's clever. always been a problem, is it? Got it over the head with a pig at sandal in June. So I ain't too clever. Things like that anymore. Don't remember them much either. Is that right? Yeah. What did you get involved in the fight? I was drunk. Oh. It was a business agreement with this bloke, which I can't, I can't go into detail with because it was illegal. OK, don't go into details, but you ended up getting hit over the head with a pickaxe handle. He was beating up my mate first. He got a broken jaw and broken ribs. Mm -hmm. And I got him off my mate and I got hit over the head with a pickaxe handle. You were in hospital? Yeah. Concussion? I don't know. Can't remember much about it. I had 18 stitches. 
Sometimes they infuriate me. Sometimes I could walk out and never come back. Um, sometimes they're capable of giving me and all the teachers a really hard time. But I do like them. Um, I enjoy their humour. I enjoy their spirit. Some of them have had some very unpleasant experiences. Some of that is self-inflicted and some of it hasn't been inflicted by themselves, but it's happened to them because of family breakups or um, their social situation. So I'm very aware of that. But they, it can be very rewarding working with these lads. When they do learn, their pleasure in that is enormous because a small stride, it may be the first stride they've ever made, and it's very pleasurable to be part of that process. Yeah. You're happy with that? We don't seem to have offered you very much, but with a very short period of time, yeah. with what, um, your educational qualifications as they stand, I don't think that we can offer you anything better. Yeah. You would have been an ideal candidate for, say, the MSOC course, but obviously you're not here for that length of time. Yeah, maybe next time. I hope we won't be here next time, don't you? No. Or are you making a career out of this? No. You don't convince me, actually, so perhaps we will see you again. No, you won't, you? I'll be at proper night. Yeah, if that's right, you'll be starred up, won't you? Mm. Well, things aren't so easy there, so you might want to think about what you're doing. out the window, yes, which had been retreated. It's soaking wet, that's what I gather, because it's pouring the rain. What happened to the covers to it? I mean, when you're issue with it, that was Friday. Yes, it dropped out of the window. No, we reported it to the officer. I know you did that, yeah. but I'm on about the covers. The covers just don't disappear out the window. No, I don't know where the cover is, because it just completely fell out with the cover on it. When you went to the library on Friday, the first time you went, you were instructed to read the conditions of issue of library books. Yes. All right. On this occasion, because it is an older book, and I've had a word with the library officer, OK, what we're going to do is just warn you as the events of future. If it happens again, then we'll put you in front of the gun and let him deal with it, which you'll probably find out that he'll be, have to pay for the book, yeah, repair the book, and probably not use the library for you know, a specified period of time. OK, so find yourself lucky. In future, if you damage it, then we'll have no option to put it in front of the gun and let him deal with it. OK, yeah, any problem? Yes, sir. Quite happy. Yes, sir. Right, you've still got the other books you wish you with. Yes, about another three, haven't you? Yes, sir. And they're OK? Yes, sir. All right. All good. All right. Just be aware the next time you do it. Calm down, sunshine. I'm not struggling. 
Well, stop jumping about. I'm safe, man. If you let go, I'm walking. No, there's no safe. You ain't walking nowhere. Right. I used to go out on a Saturday night to do 12 local nightclubs. And the intention is having a fight. <laughs> You can guarantee there was a fight there, so... That was my general intention when I went out at night time to fight at the end of it. No, it does. You don't <coughs> fight, you get a blade in If I go out with a girl, though, and I'm personally going out with a bird, I don't look for trouble. I try and go in alone. Out of the way pubs in the back streets where I knew that people wouldn't be looking for a fight. Mm. Mixed with the older people. Depends what intention you go out of in the night time and in what mood, frame of mind you go in. If you go in in a bit of a pissed off mood, a bit of a bad day at work or whatever, and it builds up in the pub, you either go home in a depression and pissed off, or you had a couple of pints and you think, fuck it, it's rubbish in here, it's quiet night, I'm going home to bed. Or you let it build up, you get more drunker, someone starts staring, you think, what the fuck is he staring at? <clears throat> and it builds up in any way, then, then you start getting in more of a frame to fight. It's take on the world. You don't see anything. Other than med, you just want to belt them or whatever. We'd like to give you a go at trying to keep calm in certain situations. <laughs> so if you could, I mean, obviously there's only four of you, if you could get into pairs, it'd be easier if you get into the pa pair with the person you're sitting next to. And we've got some cards with certain situations on. Most of them we've taken from our, our border player. And we'd like to give you some time to talk about it between the two of you. Decide who's going to play which part and how you're going to do it. How does that sound? Like a bar fessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've talked about it. So we well, might as well give it a go. I'm going to slag his family down and we're going to have a fight, yeah? <laughs> Real good. Well, even though, it might, a bit of acting, even though this might be even on, on your little bit of paper, what you've wrote down. At the end of the day, I might not, I might not find something funny and think, well, he may mean or all that, what you vote down, you know what I mean? Do you think it might help if you've had some practice in dealing with a particular, specific situation? I think we've all had practice in, in dealing with these situations, otherwise yeah. we wouldn't be okay. in here. And how have they come out? How have they ended up? Just bringing them back again to taking the purse. Hmm? Bringing them back again to taking the purse. We've thought, we've uh, had fights, otherwise, well, well I personally would be in here. That's I've what I've had to practice in this situation. So what you want to do is be able to deal with the situation without fighting. Is that right? <coughs> I mean, we we'll presume we've that. We've still got to go about doing that. Well, I'm like like slagging this. someone down, haven't we? I mean, the geezer I knifed. He called, he called me a grass. So I never grassed him. I'm doing three years for fuck all. In person. And presumably you don't want to do that again. No, because the judge wanted the sentence to be eight years. What about the rest of you? Presumably. And what happens if it comes at me? I stabbed him three times and he still chased after me. You know what I'm saying? And I handed myself in and the old Bill took it out on me. But you say it means in another country now, isn't it? Yeah, but he still comes <coughs> back occasionally, you know what I'm saying? He can drop in on, on the old pub when I'm having a drink. Accidentally on purpose. <laughs> 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 and he ain't exactly the friendliest <coughs> person when he's had a drink. And my old man says, ah, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, well, no. Nah. When I'm walking round the street on my own. Are you going to carry a fencing weapon when you get out? Well, that's what I'm down here for, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? Are well, you going to when you get out? I don't if know. If you never had that offensive weapon, though, you wouldn't... You wouldn't... You'd only have a punch up. I mean, no, if, I, if, I, if I wouldn't have had that offensive, if I wouldn't have had that offensive weapon, right, I wouldn't have got out of that corner alive. If I was losing and I carried a knife or any offensive yeah. weapon, I'd pull it. You... So you reckon you only carry an offensive weapon if you intend to use it? Yeah. Well, yeah, the majority of people, even if they never intended to use it in the first place, they just carried it for kind of to feel secure. Mm. But when they started losing and humiliated, that's where humiliated would come into it again, they would pull a knife, because <coughs> it was getting hurt. I know I personally would pull a knife if I, I carried one. You say it's happened three times. What happens if you got carried away? You, you know, what do you mean carried away? That was bloody carried away, because he never okay, stopped what coming. Happens, what happens then if you stabbed him in different places and he died? I did. And he died? He nearly did die. But he didn't. What happens if he did die? Oh, he didn't. Six weeks on a life support machine. 
I could have pressed charges, I could have walked out of that court, I, could have, I couldn't have been sitting in front of this camera. And you don't regret what you've done? No. And he might have died? Yeah. What about visits? You get nobody to come see you? Mm -hmm. We're in Nettlebrook up in Scotland, you see. So I was hoping. I've had two letters off them, and it says they'll send a radio down and they'll come and visit me one time, but I don't know how that'll be. Seven weeks near enough. Um, December, I've got to do all that. Nearly, I mean, Christmas. That's going to be a bit of a downer. But my granddad's birthday is on the 27th of December, which I'm in for, which is a bit bad. I'm hoping to get it on that. I haven't done nothing wrong that will put me back so far. So. What sort of descriptions, what things do you think of him? Do you think, well, you know, he's, he's a poor old lad, we'll let him do it. I don't know who he is, I'll leave him alone or I'll shut the bastard up because I'm not having none of this. Well, what, what goes through your mind about that lad? Well, if someone takes a piss out of my family, they can say all they like, they're still going to get a punch. I mean, no bother them. I won't back down. I mean, that is something that everyone seems to get wound up about, isn't it? Having their family slagged down. Yeah, but I mean, I've got, I've got a genuine reason. There's a lot of people that families are all right, mum and dad are together, things like that. But I've got no father. Mum can't work, she had a car accident eight years ago. She can't walk very well, so that's my reason, and I don't not like it. Do people know that, or do you think it's just people who don't know you trying to wind you no, up? No, I'll accept that if somebody says something and they don't know, I'll tell them, but if they carry on, that's when I get mad, and that's when I bang them. If the boy, as I expected, was a little bit dumb, if that was the case, there was a great risk that he would tell uh, the peer group uh, in the unit that uh, I'm in for sex offences and there's little girls and I did this, I start to bluff about it and he, he wouldn't stand a chance, I mean he'd be beaten up, there is no doubt about it, uh, he would be beaten up and what you hope is that if he can bluff his way that he will survive. What? Nice. Oh, no. <laughs> What's your story you tell? I've done a burglary and I had like four and a half grand. I heard the money up and the cop was still looking for it. I just 
keep quiet on that, that's it. That's been coming on pretty good. I've been doing gym, weight training, and rugby and all that. I got hurt in rugby. I got kicked in the knee and they all jumped on me. Um, I have, I've been having laughs with the officers and all the people in here. Definitely Jackson and all that. Been all right since last year, time you come. Hey, Mr. Davis. Hi, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all a blur. Oh, no, it's not. It's all clear. It is blue. I'm it's very nice. It's nice and neat, isn't it? Is neat. It... You're getting a lot better at this, aren't you, really? That's mm -hmm. good. Well, yes, but don't you think that's better now, how you've done those now? I'd still rather do it that way, miss. You'd still rather do it? Yeah, but when you've only got 20 yeah. pence and 30 pence to add up, it, yeah. it's all right putting it in a line, isn't it? Yeah. But if you've got... Lots of sums of money to add up. You could go right off the end of the page. And how can you keep it all in your mind? This is so that it's easy for you to look at and add up. That's nice and neat. Is it? It is. I'm quite impressed. What do you want to do? What do you want to say? I'd, I'd turn knock around with, but not go around hurting people, cutting people off. Yeah, I don't know any people who want to go for it. You see, because if they want to go for it, they, they know that, you know, obviously what the name says, you know, the K Blade. <laughs> But if they're prepared to go for it, then fair enough. You know, but I, I, I won't go around. Is it fair enough that they do that? Is that fair enough if that they, they, they sort know. of lads around? Well, if they know that, you know what I mean, that you've got a reputation, not sort of me personally, but if the gang got a reputation of doing something. They want to keep that reputation, that's up to them. And at the end of the day, they're going to turn around and say, well, won't be, won't it. No, because you, you do too much. It, it comes to you reckon, somewhere you reckon, they won't come to that conclusion. <clears throat> it must do. It must come to someone. Someone has. Well, yeah, come right. to me. It come to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but I just wonder as to whether everybody agrees. Well, Maybe they haven't reached that yet. Yeah. I am. I think somewhere along your life you're going to say, "It's all been a waste, Alice. I've wasted so many years doing oh. that. It's the wrong kind of way to be going on." Hmm. I mean, I, I reckon it's called to be... The longer it goes on, the harder it is to start again as well. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah. That's right. So, like, now, I, you're asking me that question. Yeah. One white vest. Yeah. One skids. Yeah. One PE vest. Two socks. OK, and the next. What are you on about? Two towels, two skids. One white vest, one blue tee, one sock, one work shirt. There's nice, only a little lad. Yeah. Yeah. That was a bit cool, boss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell them what you're in for. What's the info? Eighty-eight on the door. Yes, eight fourteen. I'm gonna get it at fourteen. Hi, hi, Jimmy. Merry Christmas. Alright. Have them all. Have them all. That's it. That's it. Yes, you can mark some up. Oh, look at him, we're seeing the audience. Oh, my yeah, God. Savannah. Don't, don't pull for over here, because I don't want fucking smoke, man. It's tough. It ain't tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the music, come on, then. Right, right, brother. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Is that much force you to choose on my hand? Well, you shut up. Okay. Let's take it easy now, lad. All right, boss. Okay. You only need three officers. And you don't need to put a lot of pressure on or anything. The only time he is in a lot of pain is if he struggles. Ah! You're going to snap my wrist. You're going to snap my wrist. One snap, you don't worry about it. He's held in arm locks, wrist locks, and his head is held slightly down, that stops him kicking, it stops him struggling. Before we used this method, it was a matter of having five or six officers and taking a leg and an arm each and carrying him while he was struggling. Somebody take my hat, please. Thank you. 
Imagine, you've just been told that you're not getting a visit. You've been expecting a visit all week. And you've just found out that you're not getting a visit. OK, can anyone think what what they would be feeling? I'm upset, but I don't think it would provoke my anger into fighting, just no visit. That's me. And how would you feel if you found out you hadn't got a visit? Sticking me fist through the window. I'm trying not to cry anymore. Eh? I'm trying not to cry as well. Oh, yeah. 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 We got you radio. Yeah, no. Hey. What's in it? Hey? Hang on. Bailey? Yeah. My mum. My dad. Yeah. Can I put the phone down on here? Mm -hmm. Did I do this to you? No. Think about it, Lee. No, because you're here by me. Because hmm? you're here with me now. No, but when I put the phone down on you, when I said that you, you can make your bed, you can lie on it. You, you, you did the offence afterwards. Yeah, I know. I've done it to you, haven't I? No. I've done it, but I don't cry. But I've told these other lads that I've done No, listen. I'm not about other lads. I'm not about you and me. Yeah, I'm no, face no. to face, like. Yeah. I've done the crime. It's my fault. I've done no, it. but I've put the phone down on you. It's a no. Don't worry about that. that. Eh? Don't worry about that. I'll be home soon. But you wouldn't have been here if you hadn't come Yes, I know, Mum. See? You said no, didn't you? Well, it's sort of, but See? mostly my fault. And the, about a fifth of Mum's, an eighth See? of Mum's. See? See, I'm learning all these amounts by tobacco. Because you can buy eight. So it shows if I had to put that phone down. I'd have been open and all right. You'd have been, you'd, you wouldn't have been in here, would you? So it's my, so it's... No, it's not only your fault, it's my fault as well. Cos I thought I could lead in my own eyes. Couldn't could it? It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> Very emotional and happy. And I'd like to see him in a couple of months. Cos 
I'd like them to come down every fortnight, but they've got their own lives to lead and their jobs. Yeah. It's like me when I walk through, they don't ask me my name. They just know it off by heart, find out how you swim. And that's it. <laughs> no one, no one comes to me. No one comes to me. They don't even ask me my name, they just know. Why they got one? Automatically. Why they got When? Oh, I wondered that, but we was on bang up, so I couldn't have my hair cut. What do you want to be on bang up for? You normally have bang up. What's bang up? Well, you're in them yourself, right? Today we're out, but tonight we won't be. Why? Tomorrow we will be. Why? Is it a privilege, is it? Association. More than a... You know, in Lincoln, we only could have association three nights a week. I mean, two nights a week. On the weekend. What's association? Where you can watch TV, play pool and snooker. And yeah, dance. Every other night, TV. Someone that's been in here plenty of times, they sort of, like, treat it like home, but no way. They sit no way home. It's completely different, I tell you. Just wish you were out there breathing fresh air and everything. And you only can do that when you're walking to the gym or anything. But apart from that, to see the outside world, it's going to be scary. See, I ain't Oh, yeah? Come on, then. Get your best. You're right, then. I don't know where to go back. I'll have a little bit of chair. Come back. Come on. Hey, when you got to go back? Right, see you later, then, don't you? I'll see you soon, anyway. Yeah. That's good. See you. Yeah. Look after yourself, yeah. won't you? Eh? There's a man in there, look. See you in a couple of months. I'll write to you, I'll write to you. ta ra love. ta ra See you later, Dad. ta ra love. See you. Have a night. Hey. No tea, David. We're serious about people maintaining contact, maintaining family links, and so on, whilst they're going through a sentence. Going back, as I said, particularly with somebody serving a long sentence. Then I think it probably is necessary for them to be able to embrace at the beginning and end of a visit, to hold their child, to communicate as near as possibly to a normal um, visit, a normal circumstance, a normal conversation. But if you do that, then there's a price to pay. And the price must be that contraband, particularly controlled drugs, can be easily passed in those circumstances. Um, our standing orders actually say that prisoners are allowed to embrace at the beginning and end of a visit. As soon as you say that, you are saying that drugs can come into prison. Well, it's passed different ways, but like, it's about to say the way I do it, isn't it? Uh, like, they have a girlfriend to put it in her mouth, and I'll just kiss her, like, Pass it over and I just swallow it. Or like, or, or like if, if you've got a kid, if you've seen it on the visits, but like, they put it in the kid's pocket and they pass the kid over to the dad. And the dad just takes it out of the pocket. Or, or like, another way is to see me your shorts or your pants, like, you know, you know the thick th thing, just like if you get just get a razor, just, just cut down the side, put it on in your pocket of your trousers, just push it in. And when you go through, like, like, like the, officer, the officer doesn't actually touch you. So he's not going to see it or feel it. That's another way of getting it, but that's only if you get a little bit in. If you get a fair bit and you want to swallow it. Tobacco tends not to be the currency now. Um, many other things, but cannabis among them. But cassette tapes and all sorts of other things are currency, but cannabis is a very powerful um, currency in prison and gives a lot of power to the, the person who controls the cannabis supply. So it's not only the effect of the abuse of the drug, it's the, the power in the hands of, um, of the supplier. I, I could very easily bring you two ounces in here now, you know, easy. It's like, you know, there's, in fact, at the minute, there's a lot on this unit at the minute. But, like, no one ever gets, like, any, anything better than, like, uh, um, dope, you know, so, like, if I started bringing some in myself, so I started bringing heroin in, and I'd have to think I wanted it in the cell. But they're thinking of putting screens up in on the visits. But you've got these lads who go out on community service at weekend. I mean, 
it won't be nothing for me to get my missus to meet one of them. And he has to swallow it outside and bring it back in for me. So, like, there's, there's no way around it. Like, a prisoner would never stop drugs getting into prison. No way. I started getting false credit out on that. Uh, cashing checks. Until all that had gone. I started then on another identity. Did the same thing. Carried on doing that for about three months before I got caught. Uh, I got caught for that offence, which was uh, £15,000 credit fraud. I'm doing a gasper to get out of state. I'm doing a gasper to get out of the gates. Nah. Get the civvies. Yeah, go on then. Aye. Yeah, cheers, Ad. Yeah. Yeah, see your kid then. He's not like you. Aye. He's not like you. Yeah. See you later, mate. Why are you lazy? No. I'll see you in January when you get out, mate. Yeah. We'll give him a pint after being down to see Arthur, all right? See you. Prison's no less, it just takes time off your hands. All they do it for is to like, make you look at what you've done. But while you're in here, you're too busy doing other things, like getting on with life. Just trying to live the best you can in here. So it's not really a lesson, it just... Stop, the amount of stuff make you think of it a bit, but uh, most of the time you're just too busy living and getting by in here to recognise that you've been put here for punishment. What is it? Come on, two for discharge. Yeah. Chadwick and Munison, yeah. Here you go, Chadwick. Come on in, Chadwick, time we go. Same as Here we go, Chadwick, two off. Everyone asks you what you're in for, how he did it. You ask them what we're in for now, they did it. You just pick up tricks of the trade. <laughs> Chadwick! Down there. Yeah. Everything off. Chuck them all in that tub. Shoes, the fucking lot. Wrap that round your waist, go and get your kit. Outside, boss, and I've got a jacket. More than likely. Yeah. See the, see the answer when you go through Yeah. You had a clothing board, but you declined it, didn't you? Okay, well, that's the only thing we're holding for you. The rest of the stuff you've got, you're quite happy with everything. Yeah. Sign there. You've got no comeback on the service now. Chuck that in a bin. Okay. As long as you had this. Yeah. Go across there and go and see the governor before you go out. And your date of birth? Uh, 16th of the 8th, 69. Court and place where you were sentenced? Uh, not in the Crown Court, sir. And what was that sentence? 12 months. Did you sign it? Can I see it again? Yeah, safe. <laughs> Anderson, June 0th, 727. Will you sit down, please? Are there any witnesses you're going to want to call on your behalf? Yes. What are the names? Uh, Fleming and Burton. Fleming and Burton.
Do you understand the procedure now you've had a chance to read it? Yes. If at any point you don't understand, you must say so. And have you had any written answer to the charge? No. Would the clerk read out the charge, please? <clears throat> the charge is committing an offence under YOI Rule 50, Para 1, commits any assault, i.e. at 0900 hours on the 20th of February 1990, at Unit 1, it was found you had assaulted GNO, sorry, GN2027 Totten and JG1420 Cartledge. Are you going to plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Not guilty. Would the reporting officer give his evidence, please? Sir, <coughs> at about 0900 hours, on the 20th of February 1990, in Unit 1, GN2027 Totten and JG1420 Cartledge complained they had been assaulted over the past week on a few occasions by GNO 72 Anderson, who was accompanied by other trainees. Assaulted trainees say they were punched about the body, had towels flicked at them, and had painful locks applied to their hands and arms. The assaults took place within Unit 1. That's the evidence, sir. One of the main things is bullying for gain. Because they're stronger, force them, hand over their tobacco, sweets, anything that they purchase from the canteen. And in fact, I've even known them to take the dinners or the puddings off them, really. And we know what's going on, but you can't prove it because the lad won't complain about it. Well, it started off coming to my door and everything, saying, we know what you're in for. I would say, what? I said, you're granny bash, aren't you? He says, no. You know, denying it all the way, and then I says, we've got proof and everything. One time I was in the gym, this lad got up, turned around and went straight on my back and everything. Gave me a, sort of a slap and a punch at the same time in the back. Leading me into a fight, but I wouldn't fight back. And everybody calls me a nonce and everything. Sometimes they just spit in my face and all that which the bosses don't know about. Give your full name and number to the board. JG142 Cartledge, sir. It was Anderson, Greenway, Ferguson, Paul Mentor. Anderson got me by the thumb, twinked me. Greenway and Ferguson punched and kicked me, and Paul Mentor joined in as well. I shouted when he first stabbed me, but he says, if you shout some more, we'll get like, your order. There's someone else that's come. I was beaten in the surgery by him. Um, the boot room on Unit 1. And uh, in the dormitory at South 2's dormitory on Unit 1. In the past, how did you respond to these beatings? This is not the first time. It happened several times, I yes, And In the past, prior to you reporting this, how you responded to this? I weren't too bothered about it at first. Uh, they did hurt and things. But I was just too scared to go up to an officer and tell them about it. And I thought it was high time that something be done about it. Keep together and come to the big gate. Right, Yeah! Yeah, let's go run Ain't that cold, you know? Nah, it isn't. Hey. My fucking feet. These trainers are too. This is safe, you know. <laughs> this is safe. I'm buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. Give me the hour. 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 Give me the Cooper. Open the gate. Open the big gate. Come on, come on. Yes. 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 You know it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have they picked up? Hey, go. Oh. 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 O
Trail. Well, Mrs. Sergeant from Malta Police Station, I've got a warrant for your arrest. No. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, what you say, putting a right in the evidence. Hey, how come I weren't told about this, then? It's a warrant for having magistrate courts for non appearance. That's for your rights. Oh, I really fear when I'm in Pardon? really fear when I'm in Pardon? That's the that name, though. Oh, no! KP2198 Greenaway. Matthew Greenaway. I'll sit down, please. I'm going to ask Mr. Young and the reporting officer to give his evidence. Sir, at about 0900 hours on the 20th of February 1990, in Unit 1, GN2027 Totten and JG1420 Cartledge complained they had been assaulted over the past week on a few occasions by KP2198 Greenaway, who was accompanied by other trainees. Assaulted trainees say they were punched about the body, had towels flicked at them, and had painful locks applied to their hands and arms. The assault took place within Unit 1. That's the evidence. Sir. What reason is Mr. Young? What do you think that this young man has been charged with this offence? The reasons are two people have complained about him. He, they were assaulted by him in the company of other trainees who formed a gang to assault these two lads, and probably others, I don't know, sir. But these are the only two who have complained. Yes. You know the situation that Greenway has been charged with assaulting you and at least one other mate, inmate. You willing to give evidence in this matter? Would you like to tell us what has happened to you? Sir, I had no job, sir. I was wing cleaning. I was walking to the ones landing one on unit one outside the dorm. Greenaway, Anson, and Ferguson. Poor man, sir. Anson grabbed me by the thumb, tweaked me. Greenaway and Ferguson started punching and kicking me. And Paul did it as well. Why didn't you report it to begin with? if I reported it, then nothing have got done about it anyway. So why did you report it after two or three days? Because when you've got another witness against you, you've got a good case, and when you when there's only one, it's a waste of time. So you waited for it? You were looking around waiting for another yeah. incident to take place before you actually yeah. decided to report it? Because if there's one of you, there's no it's going to get done about it. They're going to turn a blind eye, but there's two, and then that's something's going to get done. What, in your opinion, why you think they should pick on you in particular? Sorry? What, in your opinion, you think why they should pick on you in particular? They, don't, they just go around and pick on everybody. They've done it to quite a few people on unit. Just go around and pick on them, and that's it. Beat them up, and that's it. Just go to another one, beat them up, and another one. Keep going on like that all the time. It's not on. Hello, it's me. Oh, just Are you right? Yeah, just yeah. wrong with the show. Yeah, just wrong up. And you got a lot of pennies or what? Yeah, I'm gonna right, I'm gonna get on the train at one minute to eleven. One minute to eleven. Yeah. Right. And I'll get into Nottingham on the platform, right? Yeah. About twenty to twelve. Oh, yeah. you're right, oh. Yeah, buzzing. Oh, I've been thinking buggered, I've been thinking all day, all last night, oh something's all wrong. I was awake all last night. Was you? Yeah. Did you miss your mum and dad? Terribly, yeah. Sometimes when I've got nothing to read, just open my drawer up and read through the letters. Bring us back good old times when we were on the air. At 0900 hours on the 20th of February 1990, at Unit 1, it was found you had assaulted GN2027 Totten and JG1420 Cartledge. You understand the charge? Yes, sir. Have you had enough time to prepare your answer to it? Yes, sir. And do you wish to be considered for legal representation? Not this moment, I think. And are you going to plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Um, yeah, you gave me a beating with a couple of other lads in the dormitory, so... whilst I was cleaning it. The last occasion was in the shower room, where he whipped me with a towel with another inmate. I'd like to call Pascal as a witness to this, sir. 
he was there all the time. He'll be able to explain to you in detail what happened. Yes, he's in there. Yes, he is. The full name and number to the board. GN1082, Pat's Council. Thank you, Pat's Council. You know that you've been asked to bear witness to a matter which is said to have occurred about two or three weeks ago involving Cotton and one or two other people in the shower area. Now, you understand you don't have to give any uh, evidence unless you wish to do so. Are you prepared to give evidence? No, sir. Pardon? No, sir. You're not prepared to give evidence? No. no. Right. Going on to the ones on unit one outside the dorm. Same again. There's all the rest, Parmenta, Greenway, and all them. Ferguson and Anson. They had me. Parmenta jumped on me and started hitting me. And the rest of them. Have you got any witnesses to this? I don't need witnesses. Because when you lot are doing that, no one will come on the, on the landing with it. No one will come near you when you that's start that's picking on people. Point. If you want to make any question, I would do it with me and I'll ask the question. I don't want to argue between you, see. Yeah. It's quite clear that, that what Cartledge has said, and whether it's true is another matter. That's for you to decide, and it's for us to decide. But he's entitled to state that. And I think it's not unreasonable if, in fact, units are, if lads are being picked off one by one, that that's the sort of thing that does tend to happen. I mean, I've been in this business quite a long while, and I'm not a prison officer, but I know that people who do gang up on lads don't do it when there's a group of them or when there's officers about. Yeah. There's one thing, sir. Pascal has decided he doesn't want to give evidence. He decided he's not to give evidence. Apparently so, sir. Well, if you wish to do so, he'll be brought in. We shall have to bring Tom back in. Bullying does take place, place, undoubtedly, in all prisons, especially with young people. It's very difficult to find sufficient evidence. Uh, inmates are rarely prepared to give evidence against other inmates because they're seen as grasses by other inmates and by officers sometimes. And sometimes officers take the attitude, well, you've got to be, be able to look after yourself in this situation anyway. Your name again to the board. GN1082, Pascal, sir. Thank you, Pascal. Now, you heard what I said previously. You don't have to give evidence unless you wish to do so. Yes, Are you now prepared to give evidence? Yes, sir. What made you change your mind? Because I felt bad about coming in here and saying I didn't know nothing when I did. OK. Thank you. I'm going to question you about what you might know about some, some assaults which took place by various inmates on two particular inmates, Totten and Cartilage. Yes, do you know anything or were you present when either of those young men was assaulted? One of them, sir. Which one was assaulted when you were there? Totten, sir. Whereabouts did this take place? In the association shower, sir. Are you quite sure that Parmenter was involved in this? Yes, sir. Was what about any previous occasions when you've seen bullying going on on either Totten or Cartilage? Yeah, well, I have seen Totten being beaten up before. Um, on a number of occasions, I did different people. Would you know the names? Yeah, I do know the names, yeah. Are you prepared to give them? Well, no. The repeat, you don't have to give this evidence unless you wish to do so. Are you be given every protection possible? Pardon? You'll be given every protection possible if you require it. No, no, but no, you no, don't sir. have to do so unless you wish to do so. No, sir, I don't need protection. Right, OK. Anything further you wish to say? Yeah, just, um, there's no need for what happened in there. As I said, Prime Minister was mainly, like, being one of the lads, getting in there with them to try and probably be friends or whatever by doing it. But Prime Minister didn't really want to do what he did do. At the time, it was mainly Ferguson that drawed him in to what he did do. Let me say, Pascal, I, th you, I think it's quite courageous of you to come and give this evidence. It's not an easy thing for an inmate to give evidence against another inmate. I'm sure it wouldn't happen unless you could see there was a good reason why it had to be done. Yes, sir. 
Well, I felt bad going out knowing that he was on my conscience and he's in the dorm with me and I lied saying I didn't know anything okay. when I did. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. <clears throat> It's been bad, because no, no, do I've been frightened to fight back. And if you do fight back, you'll be up before the governor? Yes, which I do not want. What would that mean if you were up before the governor? I'd lose days. Well, this lad, he had a fight and he got caught, and he got sent to the governor, and he got five days suspended, which means if he got into trouble again, he'd lose five days, which I don't, do not want to lose any days at all. You want to sit down, please? I said, well, let's listen to all the evidence during the course of the day, particularly in your case, and we find you guilty of these offences of assaults on two inmates. We're going to ask the governor now to give a report on your conduct while you've been in, in prison, and in Glenfarb or wherever, and uh, then we should make a decision. Mr Chairman, GNO 720 John Timothy Anderson is 19 years of age, and is currently serving 30 months detention in the Young Offenders Institution. He was sentenced at Stafford Crown Court on the 29th of July, 1988. He has 15 previous governor's reports, including two previous assaults on inmates and a number for abuse to staff. He also has one for failing to return to the prison after a temporary release and one for being in possession of an implement for smoking cannabis. Unit conduct report, he was moved to Unit 1 from Unit 10 in October 1988 due to bullying other inmates on Unit 10. There has been no real improvement since then and he's been on Governor's report regularly. It is thought by staff that Anderson is the major figure in Unit 1 in the taxing and bullying that goes on. But until now, not in, enough evidence has been put forward for any action to be taken. Assaults and bullying of inmates is something we will not tolerate in Glenfarver if we can possibly stop it. You clearly tried to intimidate and bully other inmates. You must take the consequences of your own actions. We take into account one or two things. One is the fact <coughs> that cartilage only mentions one <coughs> assault by you and you were not involved in the assault on Totten in the showers. On the other hand, you've had a bad, very bad record while you've been in Glen Parker. You'll lose 56 days remission. There right, you yeah. go. You all sit down, please. <clears throat> well, we've heard all the evidence, screen, and why have you decided that you are guilty of these offences? We're going to ask you two things. One, do you wish to say anything further about the matters that have taken place? Because we have to make a decision about you. Is there anything you want to say in what we say in mitigation? In other words, to lessen any punishment that might be given to you. Any reason why we should give out a lower punishment than we might otherwise done? Yes, sir. I don't hear from the governor then as to your record while you've been in Glenfarber and in custody. And uh, we'll take that into account in coming to a decision. Six previous governor's reports against this young man, one for a previous assault on an inmate, one for possession of a controlled drug, one for failing to report back to the prison after temporary re release, two for damage to the fabric of the establishment, and one for abusive language. Unit conduct report says that it comes as no surprise to the unit staff that he is charged with this. Whenever a name can be elicited from the victims of bullying in the unit. Greenway's, Greenaway's name is usually amongst those names. Oh, Greenway, assaults and bullying of inmates will not be tolerated at Glen Parver, so far as we can possibly stop it. You and others have clearly tried to intimidate and bully other inmates, and you must take the consequences of your actions. In view of the fact your actual record has, has only involved one assault, and you were not involved in the showers, where what we consider quite a serious matter took place, you will lose 49 days remission. Right. We'll sit down, please. Well, Parmenter, we've heard all the evidence that's given during the course of the day, and we find you guilty of the assaults on the mates. Is there anything you wish to say which will help us to come to a decision about what award to make? In other words, you can 
say something in what we say in mitigation. In other words, is there any excuse you can offer for your con conduct? Would you help us to, to come to a de fair decision? I'm a bit surprised I got found out, but I've this, this is my first time in trouble. And you, you found me guilty, so I'm sorry for things never happen again. Until recently, very recently, you've had a very, very good record. You've allowed yourself to be dragged into a gang of bullies who intimidated other lads in this in your unit. Life can be very hard for some of the lads here if they allow themselves to be bullied, and you've taken some part in that. You can thank for another. Uh, you can thank another inmate for the fact that he said words which helped your case, and which suggested your part was a relatively small one. For that reason, you'll lose 21 days remission. And we hope we'll never see you in this position again. And we're pretty sure you won't be. Right? If I get all three back, nothing will have changed in the unit. They will still be regarded as the kingpins. Uh, if they got away with it, I would have had real problems. Real problems. They would have taken back where they left off, if you like. The people who had given evidence against them would have been at risk. We would have had to move them out. Yeah, big problems that would have caused. My group officer, he says, what you ought to do is act more mature than you are. And then you would to go a lot more further. So... How does he mean, act more mature? To pull my socks off and take life as it comes, a bit like... Um, Don't take things to heart and everything. Just do your time, get knuckled down to it and everything. But sometimes I can't stand that, cos I've been here five months now. It's been all right now and then, but not anymore, when they find out what I've been for and everything. It's just been hell. Lisa. Lee. Yes, sir. L-E-W. Yes, sir. What about uh, your health at the moment? Is there anything particularly worrying you about it? I see you smoke. You have a cigarette behind yes. you. Yes, sir. But that's about it. I drink and smoke, but not both at the same time. All right, they're taken by downstairs. Davison, Clark, and Northampton. <laughs> 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 This one's also in blue. Just grab a kick block, uh, and a jumper, and then a change room for the shower. Done it. Change. This way. <laughs> I'll just go through a few facts here. Anyway. Yeah, Lee Colin Smith, yeah? Yes, sir. Now, for a start, we, we do away with the Sabre. Right, Mr. Midwight, you know. We're not in the army. I'm your group officer. I'm not your father. I'm not here to hand you through the sentence. I'm here to help you, that's all. Now, this is, there's, a, there's a jungle law in this place. And part of it is, if you don't play ball, you get your head stove in. Come in, man, come in! <laughs>
Scotland, you see. So I was hoping uh, I've had two letters off them, and it says I'll send a radio down and they'll come and visit me one time, but I don't know when that'll be. Yeah, one of the things which you may feel is that um, it's difficult to forgive yourself. Um, but we believe you nothing is too serious to be forgiven, that God does love us and care for us, and He will forgive, and we can learn then to give ourselves and regrow as a person and in our own self-esteem. So when we leave here, um, we go out new people with a different aspect of life. And, 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 That's and what my dad said, study. they said. Well, you can forgive, but you can never forget. Well, I've just been taken off the gym course because mum and dad are coming tomorrow and I've been sick two times and they don't sort of agree to that. But I'm just excited that mum and dad are coming down. They don't seem to accept it. Are you disappointed about not being on the course? I am, and I'm not, because it was too much for me. Because as it says at the beginning of the course, you've got to push yourself to the limit. And I seem to can't do that, it's sort of like, so. Why don't you find something that you, you know that you can do why do you always go for something that's actually beyond you at this moment in time? To make me tougher while I'm in here. To make myself have more confidence in myself and everything. Visitors for Smith, Bennett, Gray, Nisha. Oh. Hey, that. Don't start crying again, don't start crying. I asked if I could go sea fishing, but they wouldn't let me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got your letters. Yeah. You're getting used to it now. No. Four more months to go to my hey? role. Four more months to go to my role. Mrs. McGuire says, if I don't get any more governors, okay, mm -hmm. if I don't get any... Miners don't count towards your role. Hey? Miners don't count towards your role. You know, getting into trouble with a PO and all that. But the governor, it does. Mm. Not me. Bad one. Yeah. So if I don't get any more anything, it says there's about what is it, seventy five percent I should be able to get my parole, and then okay. be out for when August. Will be for August. Yeah. Definitely for August. Yeah. I'll tell you the date. I'm certain that when he goes out the prison, he will say I'm not coming back here. But I think, given the same set of circumstances, I have no doubt at all, he will in his own mind, think, well, this is the only way out. I might just get away with it, you know. I'm sure he's very, very sorry for what he did, you know. I'm certain he is. But at the end of the day, given the same set of circumstances, instead of standing up on his own two feet, he'll go out and he'll, he could very well do the same um, source of crime. Perhaps he may pick his mark a bit better, you know. Um, he says he didn't know it was she was so old, but, you know, I can tell an old lady from a young lady. And it says, Dennis Taylor taking off the glasses like that and going, like that, playing snooker. And then there's Joe Johnson, like that. And I was taking a look out of the script, you know, the officers and all that. And they took it out to laugh and everything. He's funny. He's, he's amusing, you know. Um, and he's very, very respectful to me, you know. He, he talks to me and we, we've had a good hour talk the week before I went to Preston. And I told him he was some another group officer was taking over and I explained to him, you know. And he says all the right things, I'm not gonna do it anymore, you know, there's the last time you'll find me in here and uh, but I'm doing a bit of fence sitting here and I, I'm not I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, Rice. Right. Fifty-three. We've just got Simpson back off the block, just keep an eye on him. Uh, other than that, no problems. We got rid of Hussein. He's not last there. night. Oh. On two, three. Well, you're, you're an um, right. That's it, really. Nothing to report. Just one kitchen. One kitchen in the morning. Yeah. All right. Three. Be good. Enjoy yourself. Should be no problem. Should be no problems. <laughs> it's a matter of great regret that on Christmas Eve, a young man of 18, awaiting sentence. 
uh, took his own life in one of the remand units. Uh, he hanged himself, in fact. It was, uh, the whole thing occurred Christmas Eve, um, and I was about to go off duty. And to find such a, tragi a tragic uh, situation, uh, you know, late Christmas Eve, um, effect affected me quite a bit. Um, the fact that it was Christmas, a time for celebration and, and, and uh, time to spend with your family. Um, Christmas Day, I just had this terrible image of this uh, young man who'd thrown away his life. And it was, ex it was extremely difficult to share the spirit of Christmas with the family. My concern, naturally, is with the, the legalities of it, in obviously informing police, coroner, coroner's officer, and so on, and next of kin. But we have to be aware of the effect it has on our staff, particularly those staff who are the ones who, who discover the suicide. And with the two young officers who discovered this young man on Christmas Eve, they were both young, not only in years, but young in service. So obviously a very unpleasant and traumatic event for them. I think the problem with the prison service is that it's always been um, enveloped in this macho image. Uh, you have to have that to a certain extent to, you know, keep your own defences going. Uh, but unfortunately, this does affect situations like that. Um, I, I had uh, some support from my unit manager um, but as a whole, I, I don't think there's um, any sort of set policy in uh, support, counselling, aftercare for staff. Um, in the two, the two occasions that I'm aware of where people have uh, lost their lives, um, the aftercare was very poor. And we certainly could do with something in these rare situations. Bit of order in the back. Welcome to Glenfarber Social Club. We all know we're here for, um, what's his name? What's his face? That John. Scouse kid. John. Um, Mick McGuire, sorry. Um, he's leaving now. We've reported a special guest star all the way from America just to be with you tonight. A 1960s wizard on the old guitar. May I introduce our guest star? You're on. Right on. So, I'd like to say, I have, brought, I have got one of my old jamming partners here tonight to do a number with me, which is uh, sort of loosely connected with you. And uh, we're going to do it for you, for you ladies and gentlemen, who have come so far to celebrate this man's departure here. And I think I'd rather be starving down in Africa Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, this part of the show, I want to introduce to you a very special guest star, all the way from the small screen of America, lovely Delilah! But I had a bet when I was a bus driver that I'd never make a screw, and for a laugh, I went to it. Right? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I lost from start to finish, me. He is a brilliant group officer. But whenever I've done something like you, would say, you prick, and all that. But it's like my dad. He's like a, a stepfather when I was in here. We, we thought, well, shall we have a statue erected? Shall we get something, you know, shall we get, shall we get someone to paint you? Well, no. We found the ideal thing for you. Mr. Squidgy Bum. The lads on the unit thought this really looked more like you than anything they've ever seen. One in the protected room, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go down and see it. Good afternoon. Morning, how are you? Feeling a bit better now? Yes, all right. Okay, thank you. That's it, sir. No more. No more. Right. Okay. Morning. 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 <laughs> Is this part of your art group? Yeah. Who's uh, here to watch doing it? Yeah. No. Yeah, come over here. You're going out on a, t a temporary release for CSB interview. Yeah. The license has been explained to you and you fully understand it. Yeah. That's your copy of the license. Keep that with you throughout the day. You must return back here to quarter past five this year, quarter past three this afternoon. Do you sure. understand that? Going down to Birmingham uh, to have an interview for CSV camp. And what does that mean? Uh, you go down for the interview, uh, tell him what whereabouts you want to go, and then uh, they'll try and sort your placements out. And then I'll go to a placement for 28 days, on um, like a pre-parole, and then like work there as a volunteer, and then go back uh, back to the prison after I've finished. Uh, they, they trust you to, to do this on your own, do they? Yeah, yeah, they give you trust to come out and go back. If you don't go back, what will happen? Well, you're classed as an absconder and you're, like, liable to be arrested, but you'd be, uh, you'd be done for a fail to appear, well, a fail to return, as opposed to abscond, because, I, like, they've let you out the gate. You've just not come back through it, so... I also noticed from your application form you've had quite a little bit of work experience really in different yeah. in different areas. Hotel maintenance, shoe factories, store manager, general sales assistant. Yeah. When when was how old was you with your first job? And how did you get into that? Fifteen. So quite a lot of responsibility then at that age. Yeah, and then I got caught like teething yeah. out of rooms. Oh right. And I took advantage of the That's situation. Stuck to that, then. Just a bit. I didn't prosecute me though. With a was there any reason for, you know, getting involved with that sort of with the wages low? Or... No, I mean, the wages are right. So I went into a room once, like, and there was just a big wad of money on the side, and, like, like an idiot was picked it up put it in my pocket. Yeah. No one said nothing. Away? No, no one said nothing about it. I thought it was going to be a good crack here, like. I was doing the job what I was supposed to be doing, yeah. and I was going in again, like, looking around the room, like, and there'd be a bit of jewellery. Yeah. I could do with that, like. And then, like, they twigged it with me, but they couldn't prove it with me, and they couldn't catch me in it. 
And then he comes to me one day and says, look, we know you're doing it, like. And I said, look, I ain't doing that. He said, you're the only one who's got a master key to the anywhere in the, in the hotel, which is fair enough to let you go. How did you get into burglary? It seems a bit more serious than what's been going on before. Well, like, all my mates were doing burglaries, and like, I know I'd have 20 quid and they'd have 200 quid now. I thought there's got to be something wrong here, like. Right. So I tried for a burger, got away with it for that month or something. On your own? First couple of while, yeah, and then I started doing... <laughs> and we started doing creepers, like, the people in the house and that, like. You get more money and everything, like. And so... It was just, just the buzz to walk in the house when the people are there and just walk out without me even knowing. So you was into that? Yeah, I was into that in a big way. The excitement in front of you and everything? Yeah, the excitement, yeah. Been about two inches away from the geezer's face while he's fast asleep. And, uh, what would you have done if you had woke up? I'm like, oh, <laughs> pick some up on the way out. But it's taught me a lesson, to say that. You think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I've lost a lot while I've been in prison. What would you say is the main thing you've lost? Missus. Right. And contact with family and friends, I suppose? Yeah. I think the missus was the oddest one to get over. Right. Right. Because I was with her for a long time. You what, sorry? I was with her for a long time. Right. And she just stopped writing to me, stopped coming to see me and everything. Right. the officers on my unit if they could set me up with this job on the hospital. So now I'm the hospital orderly, looking after, you know, mental patients and such, feeding them, cleaning up cells and sweeping corridors and that. But it's OK, I mean, it's twice as much money as I, as I was getting before. And the job suits me because I'm on my own. I'm away from everyone, which, as far as I'm concerned, is good. How do you get on with the other inmates on your unit? Some of them are all right. I mean, I prefer to stay out of the way because there's that much trouble always starting off that I get fed up with it, so I just stay out of the way. I mean, there's always someone after someone on the units, and to be honest, it aggravates me because a few times before I come on this job, I, got in, I started to get involved in it. And that's the main reason why I got this job, because I just didn't want to get involved in it, you know? I mean, you got people barring in burn, you know, selling tobacco to other inmates at extortionate rates back. And um, you get other people who are just want to prove themselves, got something to prove, seem to think that, you know, that they've got to rule the unit. I mean, I'm the kind of person that's not bothered really who runs a unit, who does this and who does that, just as long as they kick me out of it. But sometimes it's hard, but it's not hard now because we've got this job. I got used to a life in here, really, and I'm starting to, you know, sort of have second thoughts about when I get out now. I'm just more scared of getting out than I am of staying in, which I think really is a bad thing. I mean, you know, if, I, if I'm not bothered now about staying in here, how will I feel when I get out? I've got a sack from the stores. It's in there about one and a half months. Went into the gardens. Had my birthday in here, my 21st. <coughs> I had Christmas in here, which is all right in this unit. Went live or the got sacked from there, throwing a fight. I'm getting moved to Ramby, which is North Nottinghamshire, adults prison, which means I'm starred up. Because of my age. I've got a lot more going for me now. Like, when you come into prison, it gives you another chance to start again, that's... <clears throat> it's probably the best thing, because it gets your head together. But as in anything else, it doesn't really count. Prison doesn't. It's no punishment. It's a rest. <laughs> Why do you say it's no punishment? You've got your food. 
Got a roof over your head. And you got your back up. There's only women and drink you haven't got. My eyes. It's no punishment, is it? Women get on your nerves half the time anyway. <laughs> And he realised, and I did not see the driver's seat, and then he realised it was, and he looked out, and the uh, way you know, <laughs> I haven't seen it for years, bro. I'd like to settle down, but first I'm going to concentrate on a career, I'm going to do things the right way around this time. Like before, when you start trying to bring up a family, you haven't got a job, then women tend to nag. <laughs> Which you've probably got cause to. This time I'm going to work on a career, and then once I've got enough money, start the family. If it works out like that, and all being well, it will. If not, I'll blame probation. <laughs> I'll blame my parole officer. <laughs> well, we wish you luck. Oh, thank you. I says to one school, right? You know, Mr. Walton, the woman who smokes a menthol, I says to him, I says, if I was to come up to you and call you a, I said, you'd nip me, wouldn't you? He says, yeah. He said, but if, if, if I was to think you're a, you couldn't think about it, could you? He says, no. He says, well, I think you're a. He walked off. He said, there's nothing that can do, you see, because, like, you've, you've, you've not called him a. I mean, you've just said, I think you're a. And they can't stop you from thinking, can they? Past seven, there was another prison protest last night at Glen Parva Young Offenders Centre in Leicester. Following the riot at the Glen Parva Young Offenders Centre last April, six youths are now facing a mixture of charges here at Leicester Crown Court, including unlawful violence and assaulting a prison officer causing him actual bodily harm. During the disturbance, the courts heard, £22,000 damage was caused by inmates who took control of part of the remand block for eight hours, smashing windows and furniture, ripping cell doors from their hinges and flooding part of the block. 
Today, the jury has been hearing how prison officers coped with the incident after one of their colleagues was attacked and had his keys stolen. The prosecution alleged that attack was planned by a defendant who'd been moved to Glenparver from the Strangeways prison in Manchester after a riot had broken out there the week before. The Glen Parver officers told the court how they'd had to don riot gear and move systematically through the remand block till they reached the barricades on the third floor. There they received a volley of missiles, broken hand basins and toilets, piping which was jabbed at their shields, fire hoses were turned on them. Threats were apparently made that if they crossed the barricades, they'd be killed. The then deputy governor of the centre told the court how he'd taken control of the operation and ended the incident through his trained team's successful negotiation. The case for the defence will be heard later in this hearing, which is expected to last another two weeks. And uh, let me start by introducing myself. My name's Pat Malpass, as some of you already know. I have seen some of you in the establishment before, but others I actually haven't seen. And because you're from different units, then some of you will already know one another, and others just May, may not have seen anyone before at all. So maybe first of all, we could just go around the table very quickly and introduce one another so we actually know who we all are. Darren Winder. Vincent Pleasant. Justin Bowen. Lee Russo. Andy Lofty. Robert Ball. Guy Cobb. Anthony Thomas. Heath Sean. Right, thanks, that's great. Now, one of the first things I must do is to ask you about accommodation and basically what's going to happen to you when you get out. Have you got somewhere to live or not? What about you? I'll go back home. OK, no, that's fine. Fine, OK. On his bar. Where are you going? Parents. Fine. I'm Where are you going? going? You're going home? Yeah, back up Scotland to Monday. Right. I'm going back to Mrs. Uh-huh. I'm to my dad's. Yeah. I'm living with my missus. Right, OK, that's fine. Hello. Oh. Mr Pleasant. Right, please, take a seat. Please do. Please, Leah. Right, now you've come to us with a view of a, a job on, on, with involving farm work. Yeah. Can you tell me something about what sort of experience you've had in this, this type of work before? I used to work out on the farm before coming here. Right. And all that. I used to work on the tractors and with sheep and all that. Yeah. Well, what sort of things do we? Playing the fields and picking potatoes off the fields and all that. Right. And what, 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 what sort of work did you do with, with the sheep? Used to... Feed them? And feed them and all that, yeah. Yeah? Did you, were you involved in sort of shearing and things like no. that? No. No? Boss didn't trust me. He didn't trust you? No. I might uh, cut the fruits. I cut the throats? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be a few lamb chops at the end of the day. <laughs> Right, OK. Uh, let's just... Sort of if the boy, it. as I expected, was a little bit dumb, if that was the case, there was a great risk that he would tell uh, the peer group uh, in the unit that uh, I'm in for sex offences and there's little girls and I did this and start to bluff about it and he, he wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, he'd be beaten up. There is no doubt about it. Uh, he would be beaten up. And what you hope is that if he can bluff his way, that he will survive. I'm, I'm not fighting nothing now, except the screws have a go at me in that, for knocking them out in that. But after that, I'm all right. And have you learned anything here? Yeah. What sort of things I'll you passed my cooking test. There's one ward. I'll pass my needlework test. The uh, file is just gone. It's just, uh, difficult to say. I've got my fingers, I my fingers in my jaw, what I sold up in that. I pass, I've done some soft toys and that. going for a competition, that's going off. I might win some money in that, if that get anywhere. And I'll go, I'm on pre-release this week and just learn how to get a job and all that. That's about it, really. Now, I noticed from your application form, Vince, that you've actually got criminal convictions. I've only got one. You've got one? Yeah. Can you just briefly tell me something about it? That's a burglary. Yeah. I was with my mates and that, and mm -hmm. I was a bit tilly on the drink and that. I just went, we'll do a burglary with mm -hmm. them. That's when who got sent down. Right, right. So, do you, think, do you think this thing would have happened if you hadn't been tiddly? Yeah. You but think it still would have happened, do you think? No, it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. If I went with my mates and <laughs> had drink and that, it wouldn't yeah. have happened. Yeah, so would you say you had a problem with drink or...? 
I had a little problem with drink. Mm -hmm. And then, since I've been inside and all that, I just forgot what a bit of drink there. Hello, Mr Barclay. Please, take a seat. Thank you. Pleased to meet you. Um, now, you've come to us with a view of the job as a horticultural mechanic. Yeah. yeah. Can you perhaps tell us something what you understand about the job? Well, I'm, I know a lot about it, right? and uh, I can't really explain it. <laughs> just, just tell me what you've done before in this, this, this type of work. Oh, uh, I've done past the CFC, is it CFC? Mm -hmm. And uh, the lawnmower blades and all that. And worked on engines before, cars and all that. So, first of all, Barclay, how, how, do, you, how do you think you did? I said I'm crap. You thought you did crap? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I sat there and I just listened to you and you say nothing. I think they, they very often these lads have a very low self esteem and they think that they're going to make an absolute fool of themselves on video which is going to be recorded for everybody else to see. Um, and I think quite a few of them opt out of the, um, the uh, job interview situation because of that. But in actual fact, um, many of them, in fact most of them, do extremely well. Right, so perhaps you could tell me something about yourself then, Robert, if I can call you Robert. Um, some, lads, some lads are very nervous, obviously, about the cameras and things like that. Um, but I think it does give them the experience in actually having the opportunity to sit in a formal situation, having an interview. Um, some of the questions that we use are relevant questions that would be used on a proper interview on the out. What I'm going to try to do this afternoon is to base the lesson around sexually transmitted diseases. If you do go to the VD clinic, they can test for syphilis and they can test for gonorrhea as well. They'll only, they'll only sort of take blood off of you and do the test for that blood for that disease, which, which you specifically asked for. Yeah. Don't get some sheep and all. You'd better have stayed a virgin, really, wouldn't you, man? Sorry? You'd better have stayed a virgin. Stayed a virgin. By the way, you carry on, you're better off. Oh. Oh, I'm being serious. Yeah. 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 this one before you go. Is the last disappointed at you getting sent down? Yeah. Cheers. Do you think she'll stand by you? I'm sure, sure she will. Yeah, say she will. There's no risk of a dear John then. You know what a dear John is, yeah. don't you? <laughs> no. I have no. gone, huh? <laughs> no, no, no risk of that. No risk? No. Well, that's good because a lot of the youths can't handle that. I hope not. Like, if I get depressed on the air, I'll go around and hit someone, I'm guaranteed to come back inside. So, what's the point? If I ever get really depressed, I'll say, OK, I'll come back in. <laughs> so you, you come back in because you're depressed and because you know you have everything or more or less everything done yeah. for you in here. It's great. Are you saying that you can't <coughs> survive on the out? Oh, I can survive on the out, yeah. But it's like an holiday, isn't it? It gets me away from people for a while. On the out, when you get depressed, you think about the lads and the laughs you've had inside. Because every time you come in, it's the same people inside every year. And you just do something and you get picked up. I've met a lot of my mates I met in here last year. Mm. What is Lofty going towards? What is he moving towards? The last if sentence. He, if he's, no, if he's not already. Institutional. Right, right, very much so, yeah. I mean, do you ever think of that, Lofty? Sometimes, when I'm in here. I don't think about it on the out. I just take days as they come. But you don't mind coming in. Prison no. isn't a deterrent for you. No. I think if you keep if you keep your mind positive whilst you're inside, think of the things you're gonna do and the way you're gonna change yourself and look at what you've done wrong, come to terms with it, you you'll stop yourself getting institutionalised. Well, you know, I mean you might lose your children, you might lose your wives or your girlfriends. You might lose your families, you know, maybe your mums and dads no, might or right, might yeah. not disown you. Um, you might lose your job, especially if you're doing something like three years plus, then it's very likely you will lose your what job. What do you feel like if you had a son who was in here? If I had a son who was in here? Mm -hmm. um, it would be, well, yeah. I mean, I would be very sad if my son ended up in prison. But then I'm sure that, you know, every parent will say that. 
I'm sure your parents would have said that. Well, okay. I'm used to it now. Everything in your pockets, put on your card there. Okay, take all this around there, see the officer around there. Why not? Arms up and turn around. Squat down and turn around. Just squat down, turn around towards me. Show me the bottoms of your feet. And now just open your mouth for me. Good. Dressing gown on. Where are you going to on discharge this morning? Scotland. Whereabouts in Scotland? Right. What was the address that you came in on? Where were you living before you came in? With your friend and not me. Where was that? Uh, right. 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 Make sure we get the right one, haven't we? Your phone number? JG2347. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Well, whilst you're out on your placement, obviously you'll be on a parole licence. Uh, and you'll be bound by the rules of that. We ask you, you know, to respect and abide by any rules that are already laid down at the place where, you, where, where you're going to be going to. Yeah. Uh, if you do break them, there's a strong, there's a strong chance you'll be returned to Glen Parlour. Come in the room like, like the woman brought me in. She says, "Oh, this is your, this is your abode, sort of thing." Like, that's so oh, wonderful. And I come in, and uh, there was a key on the table. And I looked at it and I thought, well, if that's the key to the door, if I can actually, actually lock my door, you know. Well, I picked the key up and it starts out, you know. I thought, yeah, great, like, I can lock my door. So it's with me all the time now, he is. <laughs> key to my own room. Morning, how are you? Yes, anything you want to say? No? OK, thanks very much. Morning, how are you? Oh, thanks. Good, nice and clean. Morning, how are you? Good. When do you do to go up? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. All right. Um, gentlemen, we'll let this one go up today. And who can go up today? Right, let's see what we've got. Beef olive. Friend, your taste. Yeah. It's lamb, but I'm not a lamb lover. Sweet corn and mushroom. Yeah. Date pudding. Your favourite, sir. My favourite. Yeah. A veritable banquet for the boys. So. There's plenty of flavour in it anyway. Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody, John. Good day, everybody. Shut up in prison, like with loads of lads. I'm so used to having people around me all the time, like here. 
I mean, like seven o'clock and the place dies, you know. See, see if everyone leaves the place, you know, the only one there, you, you, you can't hear nothing. Drop a pin and you'll scare yourself, you know, it's that bad. Yeah, yeah I, I got used to the quiet, you know, like, in prison, like, you know, you get your down to go sleep when you think it's quiet, you know, but you slear people shouting and what have you, like, people walking about, you know, in the corridors, and that's quiet. And when I got here, I couldn't sleep the first night, it was that quiet. I mean, it was so bloody quiet, unbelievable. I reckon if I come out here, I could start again. A little bit if I go back. I go, well, I say if I go back. I've got more chance of starting New Year than I have if I go back down into the city sort of thing. But I mean, like, I can't afford to live out here. Christ, old daddy's got to be a bank manager before you even think about living out here, ain't you? So. Morning, Mr. Good morning, sir. Let's have a look at your weekly diary, see how we're getting on. How'd the weekend go? Fine, no problems at all, sir. And then this afternoon you've got our disabled group coming in, is that right? Yes, sir, half past one. Go! Well done, good lad. Well in, good stuff. Thank you. It's good to see you here. Good morning to all of you. We've got a team that's new to this institution, the Arclight team. They've come all the way up from London to be here this morning. And our welcome to them is how attentive we are to what they ask us to do, whether it's to listen, to stand quietly, or to pray, or to sing. That's our welcome to them. Can I just introduce to you the Arclight team? Some of them you will have met before. Starting off with my left, Glenford. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> and lastly, Ronnie. <laughs> right, I'm going to ask Glenn to come. And settle down, please. Right, I'm going to ask Glenn to come and join with you in prayer for your loved ones and for your families outside. We're going to spend a moment of quiet before God, just being quiet before God, not being conscious of the person to the right or to the left, but just having a moment of quiet with God, thinking about our families and our loved ones. Lord, I just want to pray for the guys that are in here, Lord. Lord, you know it can be difficult for them sometimes, Lord. Lord, all when things are look cool on the outside, Lord, you know that they don't feel right on the inside. But Lord, I know you can change that, Lord, with the living water that you've got, Lord. I just want to pray, Lord, for their families and their friends, Lord, and the girlfriends and the wives and the little babies that they've got out there, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray that the communication and the bonding that was shared before they came in, Lord, still remains. Amen. Amen. I just want to share with you guys, I just value your respect and you just keep quiet and just listen up to what God's got to say, yeah? We're in the business of being talking about Jesus and... One of the things, if you read the Bible, if you read the Gospels, you'll find about Jesus' ministry, 
is that it was simple. And it'll take you back to this very time when every one of you heard that you had to cheers. It'll take you back. You'll say, Lord, but you know, this happened and that, you know, I went out and, you know. And they'll say, what about that time when you in Glen Parva? And Steve said, you had to choose. What happened then? What did you do then? Yeah, but Lord, man. <laughs> you can laugh, there's no buts. There's no buts. So I really want you to just think on their mere facts. Why Jesus Christ carried this cross to Calvary. I don't need to go into the whole pain and what he went through, because I'm sure some of you have heard that message. But he carried it because we did something wrong. He carried it because he loved us. Okay. <laughs> oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man. Where you gonna run to oh, on that day? Oh, sinner man, you should be praying. Oh, sinner man, get down on your knees and pray. Oh, sinner man, get down on your knees and pray. There's some concern at this stage. Seems to have got himself into debt with one or two. Tends to stand up to the other inmates when there's staff around, but as soon as a member of staff is not near him, then he backs away and isn't quite the strong man he is. Not quite so sure that he's going to make it when the time comes to go out. It's been tougher, a little bit, because I've nearly got a year, just over a year to go to my EDR. But only ten, two more months to go to my privacy. So it sort of varies a lot, because some people... I'd like to get my parole, but people wouldn't like to see me get my parole, if you know what I mean. It's sort of like, you're a nonce, you shouldn't be on the app. So we're going to make you lose your parole. But I don't want to fight back, never. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could cry, but I can't. So, you can't cry? No, never. I've tried my best, but I can't. Sometimes I just look in the mirror and try and cry, but I can't. So. But when you first came, you did it. I could easily cry. I could easily cry. But not now. So would you say you've got harder then since you first yeah. arrived? Yeah. But not in fighting wise, no. I never fight. But I... as long as I've got the Bible out the side of me and everything to read and it's all right, that sort of gives some comfort. All pleasant, the sub yard. Have a good piece of Taylor. If you want that, 
What do you sir? Tell that lady to reception. This left on you. I think so. Yeah. We want the young men to face up to what they've done and so on. But the great difficulty is, of course, is the pressure that comes from the other inmates on people who've committed offences of this nature. Okay, so it's all yours. What up, sir? Thank you. I think what we can do is let him live with that, if you like, publicly, whilst privately, if you like, we can assist him with his difficulties and with the particular areas of problem that he's had. I think it's much better that if we can keep him in the general run of the community, it's much happier for him. He can take part in the life of the establishment. It means that he's not necessarily limited in what he does. And I think combining the two, allowing him to have as near a, a normal life within the constraints of any establishment, at the same time, if you like, behind the scenes, if I could put it that way, we can do a lot of positive work with him. Nobody's mentioned his offence. He's got through his sentence quite well. He's not been a, an ounce of trouble. I don't think he's, he's even had a report from it in bed. He's helpful on the unit, and he's only got a few days to do. But uh, any help should come from the psychologist, that, that department. There's nothing really that we can do, unless he approaches us and, you know, just talk. Because we're not qualified to, you know, get deep into sex problems and that. What name and number two, do Vincent John Pleasant. Are you number? L R one two four. Right. Just remember that. Right. Good morning, Pleasant. Morning. Being discharged at King's Lynn today. Yeah. Have you had this license read to you and explained to you? Yeah. You just understand it. Just about. Right. Who are you going to report to? No, the basin officer. Right. Monday morning. Right. Don't forget, will you? No. That's a copy of your license on the back of your travel instructions. Yeah. I understand. You, you don't need your rail warrant, you're going to get be, the be bus, are you? Then right, so you, don't, you don't want that rail warrant. Okay. Fresh air. I shall go up the bus station at Leicester and the brother of someone should come pick me up. I hope. I think we can do better. I think there's more things we can do. I'd like to see more involvement of staff with working with inmates in drug-related and other problem areas, and we've certainly got initial plans to do that, but I'd like... I mean, it's very easy to say, I want more staff. Um, and people say, yes, we've heard that before. What I'm saying is I don't want more staff just for the sake of it. I want additional staff that will allow me to do the additional work which I feel is essential with young offenders. I can't say this is a unique situation. Throughout my service in the prison service, I've seen people on the very last day doing something extremely stupid. I wouldn't like to think in Wilson's case it was because he didn't want to go out or anything. Uh, all I can think is that there was some hidden factor which we were not aware of or which occurred during his placement. And again, I can only hazard a guess that something occurred that made him behave this way and we hope we will find out on his return. 
Wilson, KP3735. Right, thank you very much. Did you receive a form this morning that tells you the charge you face? Another form has told you what goes on, and did you understand both of them? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you understand the procedure that will take place in a moment? Yes, sir. Thank you. You've been charged under Young Offender Rule 50, Paragraph 8B, that you failed to comply with any condition by which you were so released in that at 15.30 hours on the 20th of May 1990, you did abscond from your work placement at Warren Farm, Rectory Road, Streetly, in Berkshire. Do you understand that charge? Yes, sir. I note you've not made... Yes, you have made a written reply. Have you had time to decide what you wish to tell me about this charge? Well, sir, that's why I wrote it down. OK. Do you wish to call any witnesses? No, sir. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Yes, sir. Right, sit down, gentlemen. You sit down, please. And you've handed in a written statement. Do you wish me to read that statement out and take it into evidence? Yes, sir. The reason I left Warren Farm was because when I realised I only had two days left before my return to Glenparva, something in my mind said, you cannot go back. I don't know what it was, and I realised an idiot I was being, as I only had two days left at Glenparva. So my reaction was to go off after being out for five days. I decided to hand myself in as I knew that one day I would get caught, so it was better I hand myself in now rather than get caught later on. I'm sorry for what I did, and I know I let a lot of people down. For this, I am sorry. I can walk back down the road, knock on the door and say, all right, I'm back, bang me up. I can't do that. And I just couldn't. Well, I've been out, been out there, yeah, and like, I mean, you've seen the setting yourself. It was nice, you know, and go from that. Walk away from that, get on the train and walk back into this. I couldn't do it. Too much for me. I, just couldn't, I, I couldn't walk back in the gates. Now, in the evidence, we also heard of items that are alleged to have been missing at the time you went away from this placement. What I must say to you is that that is not any part of or subject of this charge, and therefore that part of the evidence I do not consider. Do you understand that? Okay, sir. Well, I mean, once a criminal, always a criminal, isn't it? But, I mean, like, um, it bothers me, yeah, you know, the fact that, like, I've been here, like, what, 14 months and I'm going along, like, you know, finished with crime, but as soon as I was out there, like, uh, when, I, when, I, when I got an idea into me, I didn't know where I could do it, it was buying money. I mean, like, I wasn't exactly rolling in it, so... Straight away, my mind went buff. Theft. Uh, at the time, I didn't even think about it, yeah. Now, you've presented evidence but to me, it doesn't really explain why you left the placement and went off. I mean, you just said it went into your mind that you didn't want to come back. No, it's not a case where I didn't want to come back, sir. I just couldn't come back. Why not? I don't know, sir. Even though I had a couple of days left, like... Well, what actually prevented you? I mean, wasn't anybody physically preventing you no, from going no, back? No, no, it wasn't that. It was just like, like I, I couldn't walk back up to the gate and just knock on the door and say, well, like, I've done me four weeks, like, can you bang me up now? Even though it was only for a couple of days, I couldn't do that. So what you're saying is you could not accept coming back to Glenparva for two days, is that right? Sir. Being banged up? Well, no, it's not a case of being banged up, it's a case of actually walking back in. And then it I... was just the thought of walking back in. Is that right? Yes, sir. But knowing you'd only got two days, I mean, what about this place made it impossible for you to come back to, having already done a fair amount of time here, to come back for two days? I mean, I mean, the setting now, so I was, you know, somewhere out of this world, like, I've never been to a place like that before in my life. And then, like, they expect, you know, like, well, I mean, other people would do it, but, like, you know, expect to come back and knock on the gate, I couldn't do it. I see. Then I think it would want me pride in hotels. You know, like, to walk back down the road, like, you know, I mean, like, the only way to get you to prison as they bring you here. To walk up to the gates is dropping into their hands in some sort of way, isn't it? And it's just like saying, well, you know, like, I've been out for a bit, fair enough, like, bang me up now, you know, I can't do that. Couldn't do it. Well, at the moment, the parole board recommendation for your release obviously still stands. 
And I, the general requirement is that they set a date, which in your case was the 25th of May, which was nearly a week ago now, and the requirement is generally that within 14 days of that, that I should release you. However, in view of the serious nature of this case, I am going to award you a forfeiture of admission of 28 days. There will be a stoppage of earnings of £3. There will be no canteen or private cash facilities for 10 days. There will be no association, dining, recreation, entertainment or any other unit activities, including classes, unless they're compulsory classes, for 14 days. And I shall be writing to the parole board today to recommend that all these 28 days be taken into account and that if they decide that you could still go out on release, that you go out 28 days later than originally planned. Take him out. That's a disappointment. I think I was a bit concerned, though, that he somehow didn't... I'm not saying I expect him to go on his hands and knees and beg forgiveness, but I think I was a bit concerned that he seemed almost to expect that he wouldn't come back. That did concern me. It was almost as though, why should we make him come back and, com if you like, complete his contract with me? Yes. And that's the thing that seemed to have gone wrong. OK, we'll get on with the next one now, then, please. Any time we send any lad out of the establishment, we are taking a chance. We're taking a risk. I mean, they've been sentenced to a, a, a term and it was decided that they would be served in a closed establishment. So any time that we send any lad out, it's a, it's a risk and it's a gamble. Um, as far as Wilson was concerned, um, that seemed the right thing to do at the time, but one of the, I suppose one of the reasons that most of them are in here is because of unpredictability um, and that you can never be absolutely certain. I think in, if, from far as Wilson is concerned, the person he's let down most is himself. He's been given a chance and probably had more faith and trust put in him by this decision that we made and probably that he's ever had before. He's let himself down and probably just as importantly, he's let the placement down. Most of the lads that come in here have had stormy past. Very few have been shown any form of trust. Any form of community work that we do is, is a very testing period, especially under the, under, um, the restraints that they're out under, under the parole conditions. We are testing them, but we're testing them under real situation. And if you, if you test people in this situation, then we come up with the real person. It says it's 509, 509 Smith in it, yeah. Could you get him for us, please? Uh, 509 Smith, so I had to come along. Mr. Baldwin was in the office. He says, could I have your grandmother's phone number, please? She says, back man, says, can I have your grandmother's phone number, please? He says, I think it's so-and-so, so-and-so, and he goes, well, you've got to make up your mind, and he says, well, I've looked at it everywhere, and I can't find it, but I'm pretty certain it's that number. He says, hey, by the way, you've got your parole, you're going on the 2nd of October. Like, hey! Ran out of the office, went into the TV room. Yeah, we never do, we're coming for all. Then I ran out of there, went on to all the landings and everything. I got my pro, got my pro. Are oh, you lying, you're lying, you're lying. No, I'm not. He says, honestly, he says, yeah. He says, when are you going to run? Second of October, man. Oh, man. And I said, it's three days later, dude, but went to other people and everything. And there's this good lad, he says, I'm really happy for you because he's done the same sentence as me. He says, I'm really happy for you, man. Come on, young Smith. Time's come, son, to go, isn't it? Yes, sir. Rather earlier than you expected, but uh, anyway, the implications of you going out is that you're on licence for 12 months altogether. Yes, First of all, you're on a licence for your parole, which lasts until the 4th of June next year. Now, you're still serving your sentence during that time, yes, uh, and you can be brought back to prison at any time during that time if you don't conform. However, after that, you're on a supervision order, which lasts until this time next year. So it's 12 months altogether. Yes, is that sir. clear? Yes, sir. And your mum's going to fetch you tomorrow, is she? Yes, sir. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. When did you last find that out? Got told by the letter. OK. Well, 
I've been told that your mum's fetching you and you're not to be released until she does, and I think that's probably the best yes, bet, don't you? So you should be leaving here about half a state tomorrow. Okay. Yes, right. Sign each of those copies for me. You're not finished yet, because we've got to have evidence that you've. I don't suppose we'll see you back, Smith, will we? No, sir. Well, it's been a struggle for us and you at times, but you managed to get there. Just remember some of the lessons you've learnt here, not the worst ones either. Yes. OK, so. OK, thank you very much. All right. right. Cheerio. Thanks. Elton Shy! Elephant Tide! Lad, you threatened me and everything, and I just hit him back. I don't know why, but it just bottled up that much. Just had enough of it, so I hit him back and everything. And people sort of had a little respect for me for, for me that. Because then they thought, oh, if he can fight back now, he's got nothing to lose and everything. But I have, I've got... Because say that I have a fight tonight, I could lose my parole straight off. But I do not want that. Let go. Good lad. There you go. You've done it now. That's it. Release the grip on the right hand. Release the grip. Steady, not too quick. Keep your feet above your hips. Get your shoulders back. Look up at the sky. Oh, no, you're too far away, Jackson. Come down a bit. Hi. Bend your knees. Put your right hand up. Yeah. Round Jump. instead of over. You're the right. Come to it. You're the right. Sit. Oh, the business. Yes. Come on, Jesse. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> 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 These will be up in one day, lads. We were walking through here in a series. Like right, all off. Take your kit, what you've got with you, straight in, straight out. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your jacko. Aye. Forget it, you're back. See ya. See ya. Well, since coming back from his outward bound course, he'd just gone downhill. Um, a lot of it is his own fault. He's easily led. He knows he's easily led. And he just jumps on the bandwagon, bandwagon, bandwagon with the other lads. He does. Uh, he's had a lot of minor reports. He's lost three lots of remission, one of them for fighting. Um, it's more nuisance to staff than actual trouble to staff. It just seems to be the thing that when people get to the, their EDR, near their EDR, a lot of them do tend to go downhill. I can't see, like, in here, there's no... Like, really, apart from being banged away in your door, there's no deterrent to stop people, to stop me coming in. Because, I mean, I had a, I had a decent job. You go out and out on van courses, things like that. I mean, it's not holiday camp. Yeah, I mean, it's the only thing that I don't like about it is being banged away. It's the only thing that, beyond like a key, I don't like it. Jackson, Wolf Good morning, Jackson. Good morning, Jackson. You are due to be discharged this morning, having completed your sentence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Where is it you're going to on discharge? Peterborough, sir. Right. And who is it you've got to report to? A. Strowbridge, sir. And that's your probation officer, yes, is that right? Keep that with you at all times. It's your yes, notice of supervision, OK? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right, further to that now, I want you to sign this document here to say that you understand that for a period of five years from today that you're not allowed to possess or have anything to do with firearms or ammunition of any description, including air guns. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. 
Right. Well, I've already got them, sir. I've already got then them, I would suggest you get rid of it rather quickly. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Because having served a prison sentence, you are now not allowed to have or possess a firearm, ammunition, or air gun. Yes, sir. And if you're caught with it, you could be in serious trouble. Yes, sir. Bill car. No fucking Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. We've still got three with us. One now has progress to being an orderly and doing quite well and making reasonable progress and waiting a parole reply. Oh, 23 hours. I don't like yeah. it. Can you get any more out? Yeah, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get any more? <laughs> but you know it's a hard life, don't you? Why don't you chew the roach, man? <laughs> I will in a minute. Half the people in these kind of places they just, they just get on my nerves. The attitudes in here are so tense and everything, I wouldn't want to come back in here, you know. I, I won't, there's no chance I'm going to come back in here, I know that, I know that for a fact. No way at all I'm going to come back in. Well, the same day you was here, we'd done that last bit of filming, right? I got an answer back from parole, forget it. I've got a review in January. So, other than that, I ain't done nothing. Except for, I put the petition to go to Exeter. Got turned down on that as well. I'm stuck here. I see him today getting like, so I got my first parole, you know. And, like, you buzz off your first parole. Like, he's not been in that long, has he? I don't think I'll think twice about doing something else. I say, if you get your parole, it's a bonus. Because you know that you're getting out on a certain date and everything. And you're going to enjoy yourself. But if you mess it up, God help you when you're coming back out on your EDR. Get out on your EDR and everything, you think. Well, was it worth coming in and left in? But it is for me, because once I get out, I'm going to make the most of it and not coming back in. Don't seem like yesterday when you know, it was all sat on the induction line and says, oh, I ain't you know, going for a long time, right? Now it's tomorrow. Mm. He'll be back in, I think. Come on, Anna. coming in everything and the old lads going and everything. And asking you, oh, what is it like and everything? What's he in it like? What are the screws like? And you tell them what they're like and everything. Because it seems as if you... They think you've been here a really long time and everything. And there's... You know, they sort of have a little bit more respect for you because you've been here a bit longer and everything. To help them out and everything. So... All the best, Miss Oliver. Have a nice day. Don't come back. Where you are, you're going to Scotland, didn't you? Hang on. Smith, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some people, they have fights and everything. Get sent down the block and everything. Lose dates and everything. That way, it's a bad experience. But it was a good experience, you know. If you don't get nicked, you've had a good day. Hello, then. Thanks, man. What reception, sir? Thank you. Well, you don't know how to see any women. 
No proper cigarettes to smoke and everything. No drink and everything. You're missing out on the good points of life that you could have on the app. Like I said at the beginning, I'd never get used to it. But eventually, it seems to grow inside me and everything. That I have got used to it, but I'll never come back in. Yeah. You're happy with the radio, because yeah. it was there, it's not there. You've got that. If you're happy with everything, sign there. One next to my signature. What do you feel about the guy you beat up now? I mean, after all this time. I don't know what to say, isn't it? I, mean, I don't know. It, it happened, that's all there's to it, you know. I mean, he's, he's obviously over it now. I mean, like, it's been 18 months since, since we've done it. I'm still, I'm still paying for it, so. He's one in the end, isn't it? But, I mean, he may have been injured quite badly. We all get injured one day, don't we? I, mean, I don't know, I mean, like, you know, I, don't, I don't feel sorry for him, you know, because I don't feel sorry for anyone who's punting out after rent boys and flashing it off. I don't, I'm not into all that. So, like, I don't feel sorry for him because, in, in a sense, it was his own fault. I mean, like, in his own statement, I was under the influence of alcohol, like, you know. That says it all, doesn't it? That's like asking for it. Five oh nine Smith. Your full name and number to the governor. Thank you, sir. JG three five oh nine. Thank you. Lee Collins Smith, sir. Right. What's your date of birth, sir? First the fifth of seventy one. Correct. Now, you've uh, been released on parole, aren't you? Yes, sir. I had some yeast away from the kitchen, like, and uh, many of us had, like, made a big barrels, big five-gallon barrels, like, put some water in, like, hot water with this yeast, put some apples in, and like, it's still bubbling away now, like, so... had a bit of a taste today, and it's <laughs> a OK, like, so... Looking at a nice piss-up with that. As long as it didn't catch on to it, I mean, like, the court onto one today, like, you know, cos, like, we made two barrels and we looked... Like, the first one we made, yeah, we forgot about that one. We couldn't find the bleeding thing. But all that was in there was apples. So like, I thought, well, we're all, you know, all right with that one. So we made another one. We put that underneath all the rest of them, cos, like, it's about 40 of these barrels, see? So we don't just put it at the back, we laid on top. Well, the screw went in, like, and he found a bucket of sugar. A bucket, like, it's full of sugar, like. So, like, clicked onto what we was doing. So he's looking for all these barrels, like, he, he opened one and there was apples in it, see? So the screw thought he'd got a jackpot, see? So he thought, yeah, I've got him now, like, and emptied the bleeding thing out. But we've still got the one. Still got the, you know, the one with the yeast in, so... Do all the other inmates all know? Well, there's about seven of us who know down the kitchen. I mean, like, five gallons ain't gonna go too far, is it, like? <laughs> Once we get to the hat, it... <laughs> Go for it, Smithy. <laughs> Ladies, yeah? Yeah, ladies. Oh. Are you worried saying all this stuff to us? <laughs> nah, cos, like, I mean, like, what's the point? I mean, like, what's the point of sitting in you saying to me all that? Because I thought I ain't saying nothing, like, you know, forget it. Pff, waste of time, innit? I ain't bothered about the screws. Just normal blokes, aren't they? Well, what can they do? When they come to me, so, like, you said this, you said that, so, yeah. A lot of bullshit, like, you know what I mean? Nick me for it if you want, but you're gonna get no evidence off it. I'm just like, I mean, there's, I mean, like, you, I've, I've seen prison programs before, you know, like, the glorified, I think. You know, like, I mean, like, prison cell blockades, I mean, the people who, re who watch that, you know, they must think, well, Christ, I wouldn't want to go into prison, like, people like B. Smith there, you know, like, that's not prison, is it? People might change the views when they see what it's really like. Drunk. <laughs> 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 
You've grown. Huh? You've grown. Hold on, Mum. You know the chaplain, don't you? There's the man there. Yeah. Hello, Hello miss. Hello, love. Good to see you. Oh, bless you. Thank you, John. You're in the narrow. Bless you. You're going home now. You're going home now. Yeah. Yes, I know. All right. Yes, yeah. all right, all right. And, uh, Bye bye, love. He'll be all right. I'm sure he will. We'll cut yourself open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bless you. As long as you want. Yeah. You've grown. Bless you. Right. So, yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, bye love. Take care. Dad. Yeah. All right, son. Got any stuff? Yeah. Oh, it's happened. It's happened at last. I'm nervous. It's happened at last. Oh, it's Danny in that and it's gone smooth. Same no, no, is it? What do you say? But then I've got an interview to do. Yes. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Stay yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't know what to do about it, you know. It's, it's your one, isn't it? <laughs> we'll get, we'll get it at least the moment, anyway. Mm -hmm. right. Did you get my letters? Yeah. Saying I can't wait enough. Good girl, uh, Are you coming home, love? Hey? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Yeah. What kind of beer? <laughs> 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 uh, on the train. What train? Someone that's been in here plenty of times, they sort of like treat it like home, but no way. It's in no way home. It's completely different, I tell you. Just wish you were out there breathing fresh air and everything. But apart from that, to see the outside world, it's going to be scary. I'm getting pissed off with the place. That's the same, same scene, isn't it? Like, it's getting. Well, I don't know, it just feels like I'm never, never going to get out there. Like, I'm so used to the place. I don't even think about getting out there. Mm. Inside an institution, if you just have them in and lock them away, then we produce cabbages and we, and we, produ and we produce people that are going to drift and drift and drift into crime and, and do very little else with their lives. And you've got to do something positive with, with these lads. I mean, that we are talking about kids. I mean, they're under 21, we're not talking about hardened criminals, and I don't accept that we have very many hardened criminals under the age of 21. And it's no good us or the community, the country in general, saying that we're going to give up on people at under 21 years of age. Well, God help us if we are.